it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode three of the HR office, this time technically on location because of the table's out of commission, so we're sitting here on the couch, but we're still here in the apartment. As always, I am Greg. I'm joined here by May. Say hello. Hello. I'm joined here by Mira. Say hello. Bomb. Damn, we will never stop starting a podcast with bomb. Stop starting. That's pretty great. Uh, so yeah, so we got the couch today. Also, we have our board of topics. Um... So these are all the things we're talking about today. Go ahead and get that all on your system now because we got a lot. We got a lot of shit to talk about. Before Friday, I was kind of concerned because aside from maybe one topic, I had like it was going to be a bunch of smaller topics. Um, and then like stuff like Kingdom Hearts had some reveals and there's whole Death Stranding thing. But then Friday hit and there's two big controversies that kind of hit around that time, which are kind of wild. We'll get it all into that. We got some spicy controversy with H3. H3. We have big shit that went down with uh, Telltale Games over the weekend. We have controversy with Troy Baker not being approached by Namco Bandai to reprise his role as Yuri Lull in Tales of Vesperia Definitive, which he seems really upset about, and a bunch of other spicy spice. So let's go ahead and get right on into it. Let's get started with the H3 stuff. Um, now, you guys have heard me talk about it throughout, I think, the last week um, when the whole thing was going down. But to, to kind of give because there was a lot building up to it and I can honestly do like a whole podcast talking about the whole H3 thing um, so basically what had happened was um, H3 H3 they haven't been they've just been doing their podcast they hadn't posted an H3 video in like three months um, Ethan Klein had kind of dropped things in the podcast of yeah we're not uploading to H3 anymore we're not uploading right now we took a prolonged break um, he, he kind of had dropped a lot of major hints about a bunch of mental illness stuff. Um, Ela has been uh, away for a while as well because she was helping take care of her father who eventually died of cancer. So she kind of was out of commission for a bit, which I mean, honestly, that would kind of wipe you out for a little bit anyway. Um, so they kind of have been away from the H3, H3 uh, Productions channel. And they just had kind of been doing the podcast. Um, and some people have been saying, man, the podcast isn't as great um, as it used to be. Uh, people were commenting on, man, Ethan seems really kind of uh, uh, not that great. Um, uh, you know, not, not that great at interviewing like he used to and all that shit. And I had been listening to the podcast and I think shit was just fine. He did do an interview with Bill Burr that was kind of awkward, but he... It was a case if he let his anxiety get the best of him because Bill Burr is a super popular comedian and he's also kind of a standoffish asshole, uh, especially in like interviews and the way he is. And uh, he was trying to fuck around with Ethan, but because he was so anxious, it kind of got in the way of shit. Um, and he kind of floundered. It was hard to listen to, but it's like, I can't blame Ethan because I've, I've floundered like that before. Not in that setting, but I've floundered like that before. Um, so, finally, H3, H3 puts out a video on the channel. It's not an H3 video. It's not an update video of where they've been. It is an ad for their new freemium mobile game. And we're done. That's it. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. No, um, uh, it was an ad. It was like a two-and-a-half-minute ad for their mobile game. And their mobile game was one of those, like, freemium models where you can play it for free, but there's microtransactions. Uh, the fandom of H3H3 H3 was super pissed. Uh, they were like, you know, I've been waiting for a video for three months and you come out with a shitty ad for a shitty game. People were like mass unsubscribing. I, I haven't looked at the numbers. Um, I haven't looked at the numbers, but um, yes, Robit, podcast over. Who wants to play games? Yeah, let's totally, we're done. We're just, we're not going to talk about all this spicy spice. No, but anyway, so um. People were, like, crying that this is the death of the channel. Ethan's become what he's hated. Uh, I'm mass on... You know, there was mass unsubscribing from the channel. And I kind of was just sitting there because I'd been listening to the podcast. People were like, man, he, he stopped doing H3 to do his shitty fucking podcast. You know? And I'm just like... I, I personally like the podcast, you know? it's Yeah, it's true. Ethan Klein is better edited than unedited because ed unedited, he's got a lot of train of thought that you could tell they edit out in videos. But... In all honesty, he's even straight up said, I suck at on-the-spot live commentary and live podcasting, but that was part of him pushing himself. Um, so everyone was saying, H3 is over. The, 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 uh, 
Uh, Ace Tree, Ace Tree's done. It's over. We're mass unsubscribing. It sucks to see a channel fall this low. Uh, go fuck yourselves. You know, a bunch of KMSs or KMYs. Kill yourself. KMS. KMS. It is a KMS. See, I'm even fucking KYS. up there. KYS. Kill yourself. K K K Y S. Mm. Kill myself. Oh, uh, K K M S is kill myself. K Y S is kill yourself. That's what it is. Um, but anyway, so mass unsubscribing, a bunch of shit like that, and I, and I kind of was at a crossroads when I saw that because I was just like, I, I know the video was poor timing, um, uh, and but at the same time, because I listened to the podcast, but at the same time, it was one of those things where I'm like. I was I was even one of the people like the, the, your first video back is the ad for the game. Mm, I just it was poor timing. So then they sat there about like a couple weeks. So that whole thing goes down. Then it was about a week, week and a half later, they finally post an actual update video, and they were just kind of upfront of like, we're the most hated YouTubers on Twitter right now. We're the most hated people on YouTube right now. We totally get it. We fucked up. And they kind of explained, you know, Ela's been out of commission for a while because of her father. Um, dealing with that whole thing that kind of puts a lot of mental stress on you uh, Ethan was dealing with a lot of mental illness shit he kind of was like he had to come to terms with the fact that you know he dealt with anxiety but he was just depressed you know it was one of those things where he kind of sat there and he was trying to get over it but he just wasn't getting over it and he just had to kind of admit I am mentally fucked up I am depressed and had to do a lot of mental gymnastics he wasn't happy with anything that he was putting out um, and they kind of straight up admitted that, yeah, we the, the issue with the game was we've been working on this game for over a year and a half, um, and we had the we've had this due date for like probably like for the better half of a year. They've had this the game's coming out on this date. They weren't expecting a bunch of the personal issues to happen. They weren't expecting to not be regularly posting to the channel and all that crazy shit. Uh, and I mean, it was it, it got to a point where there were like exposed channels that were all posting videos on H three H three about like why Ethan and Ela have betrayed their fans and why people are mass uh, sub unsubscribing, why Ethan's politics is fucked up on the podcast, and like all of these like YouTube hit pieces were coming out. You know, it was it was very clear that they were becoming very hated after that whole video. Um, but finally, like they're they're addressing everything. And they, they're like, we we understand. We what we should have done is we should have put this update video out a week before the game, um, because we feel that the blowback wouldn't have been nearly as bad, um, and we would have been able to update you guys, you know. Um, and they kind of he Ethan kind of ends the video of we're getting back to regular videos. Apparently, they've got a video they're doing that should be coming out soon about a um, voice uh, activated vape. Which sounds kind of wild, <laughs> but um, it's gonna be so they're they're like we do have content and they're like if you guys are gonna bounce, that's fine. If I was in your guys' position, I probably would have done the same. Uh, we kind of kind of I don't think the wording was like we kind of deserve it. It was I understand why you guys are angry and I don't blame you guys for leaving. You know they kind of just took they took uh, I. People are gonna think I'm kissing H3H3's ass because I'm I'm a huge fan of theirs. I, yeah, I was disappointed in that video, but at the same time, I'm like, there's got to be a bigger explanation of what's going on, especially from what I've been hearing listening to the podcast, you know. And it was one of those things where um, it, it, it kind of came down to they had a public like come down of like the, they had a, they had a public what's the fucking word I'm looking for. Not a fall. Well, they had a fallout with some fans, but they, they they had they had a public meltdown in a sense. But it was very quiet and isolated unless you watched the podcast. Um, you know, I could sit there and ask opinions of what do you think about this, what do you think about that. But what I what I did want to tie it to something that I think we can all personally agree with is, uh, yes, Fallout Robot, Fallout. But um, the thing that we could personally agree with is that whole burnout and that whole not being inspired by content. Because the whole, I would say a good two thirds of our 2017 videos, we were dealing with some horrible fucking shit. And it's one of those things where, you know, the burnout sucks, you know? 
And it's one of those things where I, when, when I was watching the video, I had sympathy for Ethan because although we're a nothing channel of 300 subscribers, it was the exact bullshit I was dealing with last year. You know, it's to the point that we're going to be seriously sitting down and we're going to be starting to remove videos. Uh, because there were some videos we've done with very bad people that we don't like. Um, that they're, they're just going to disappear. <laughs> they're just going to disappear. And, I, I mean, uh, this one's hard because I was the one who watched the video and you guys haven't watched any of the videos and stuff like that. I've just kind of told it to you via proxy. Um, but I guess the question I have, I'll start with Mira this time. Um, when, it com when it comes to just being burnt out, do you feel there's any way anybody could ever handle it? Honestly, usually when you have burnout, the best thing you need to do is step away. Yeah. And give yourself a break. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's going to turn into like almost like a Markiplier situation where you start to hate the content you mm -hmm. put out. And you just don't feel like you want to keep doing it. And when right. YouTube is your livelihood, yeah. you kind of need to. But he wanted to step away and kind of figure out stuff he wanted to do. Right, right, right. And kind of retool his videos and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's always better to just take a step back. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's your livelihood and any sort of hiatus is probably going to hurt. But in the yeah. long run, if you put out the content that you like, more people are yeah. going like like what you're doing because mm -hmm. if you just force yourself to do it people are going to start to kind of see that and they're going to be mm -hmm. like wow he's just doing this for views or whatever well even people like to for the whole h2 thing this whole year they've been doing with man these videos aren't as good as the old ones these suck they're not inspired at all and i i like them the one of your favorite videos from 2018 was the trying the dumb goofy shit you know, from the internet, because they had the confidence machine and shit, and the the milady body pillow and stuff like that. <laughs> which that that video is still fucking great. They also had they had the whole. I think his breakdown of the whole Logan Paul suicide force thing is one of my favorite things about it. Um, but then also there's like the BitConnect video was there. Uh, his video about prank invasion was pretty good. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of like Ethan's corner because I that made me kind of go, uh, okay. I don't know if they were trying to fill a quota, but I felt like if he had an extra week with the video, it could have been way better. But I wasn't the one mass saying, wow, this is uninspired. It was like, I mean, it was it was a okay video. It wasn't a shitty video. I'm also not going to go on the internet and tell someone, hey, their shit is bad. Um, but, yeah, it's... Which, I guess, for the most part, that's what H3 did. They just... The way they maintain their revenue is they have the podcast, which distracted them from doing actual videos. Um, but then... The, to tie to you, May, because I know we actually had a lot of conversations, especially when we kind of rebranded as Hardest Reset. Um, just, just the whole thing with just burnout in general. Like, how, how do you feel someone should handle it? Well, Miranda pretty much summed it up. Mm -hmm. yeah, she summed it up perfectly. So I don't have anything really. How active. do you feel you personally handled our kind of burnout situation last year? Uh, well, to be honest, I didn't know if it was. I didn't feel like. It, I didn't feel it was like a burnout, to be honest, to me. I just felt it was kind of like a, we're stepping away, we're doing other things in the meantime, we're taking a break. That's what I saw it as. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're taking a break. We just took a step back from it. That's how I saw it. I do remember our one conversation that you felt like you'd be able to, you feel, I remember you did feel, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, you did feel some sort of lack of inspiration when we got to the end of TSG. Because I, I remember you saying at one point, you're like, I feel like the name change and the rebranding is going to motivate me to work on shit again. I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't... Actually, I don't fully remember what happened. I'm pulling from my memory, too, so it could be not 100% anyway. I think that's what we did... How I did... We did word it. I'm not entirely sure, Somewhere. but... But the yeah, idea was kind of... The, the idea... I think the sentiment... I think I probably felt the burnout more than you two just because of the fact that, you know, you guys worked on the videos, did the podcast. Uh, I basically, if there was any writing, I basically, and it's self-admitted on my own, I was doing the writing on videos, I was editing the videos, I was coming up with ideas for the videos, running them by you guys, and I guess I felt the burnout more. But it's one of those things where, you know, especially with how the channel is now, you guys are like, you know, you specifically are like, well, I want to learn editing. You know, because you want to start editing videos. It's like, you're out here finally for good, babe, so you're like, I can finally flesh out and write out my ideas finally. And it's like, I feel like Ever since we did the rebranding and ever since the move out and now that we're all under the same roof, I feel like that we've been able to um, 
like I, I don't know I all the videos we filmed here even and we'll get we'll talk about the videos we put out anyway all the videos that we filmed here I am super proud of in some way shape or form and I really like them and they're pretty great but um yeah so that whole H3 thing I guess uh, if, if you have any comments about the whole H3 thing you go ahead if you don't that's fine um that's for either one of you just like on the situation in general um because I, if you want to be honest, I personally think that the the fans kind of went overboard on their insanity. Yeah. Um, I get being unhappy. I mean, I was kind of unhappy with that video, but I wasn't saying mass unsubscribe. I'm just like, okay, something's going on. Because I've listened to the podcast and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you... Let's start with May. What do you think about just that general situation? Uh, well, I mean, I guess it was bad timing, and but it wasn't intentional. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't really kept up with H3. I've only watched two videos here or there. No, yeah, yeah. So I've only heard from what you've told me. So yeah. I guess I don't really have too much to say on this subject because oh, I well, haven't okay. kept up with it. So. That's why I said if you don't really have much to say, yeah. it's just fine as well. What about you, babe? Is there anything you would feel like you'd want to say about it at all? Mainly just that they needed time away to kind of take care of themselves because when you think about it, the channel doesn't exist without them. Yeah, very much so, yeah. And to the fans that are basically like, wow, this is really suffering, it's it's really bad now, yeah. all I would tell them is, well, you go ahead and try it. Be better than them, then. All channels suffer burnout. You mentioned Markiplier. <coughs> I'd say if there's any H3 podcast you should listen to, if you ever wanted to be a YouTuber, listen to the one with Jacksepticeye. Because the reason why he's doing a tour right now is he hates the content he's making now. And he's like... Why, why he's doing things like his videos with like the like the guy who's Connor in Detroit Become Human, which we're going to talk about that at the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, and then like he played the Deadpool game with Ryan Reynolds. It's like he's doing a lot of other shit. He's done work with Game Grumps and stuff like that. It's like it's because he's sick of his own content and is trying to break out. And I honestly think a lot of these like Let's Players are experiencing that because Mark dealt with that. Um, I don't even think PewDiePie's a Let's Play channel anymore. I think he's more of a commentary channel for because all I ever hear about now whenever there's controversy with him is whenever he's streaming a game or he does a horrible commentary video but that's neither here nor there but um and it's like Achievement Hunter they branched out same with Funhouse they've all branched out and done a bunch of all encompassing stuff in fact they uh, Rooster Teeth and Funhouse have their Arizona Circle their sketch comedy stuff that they just recently put out which the videos I have seen are fucking great <laughs> Yeah, is I don't know. I just think, yeah, I get it that maybe a couple things seem stale, but also I think the fans just lost their fucking minds. So, um, so now from a topic that only one person has knowledge about to a topic that we all have knowledge about, let's talk about let's talk about the Telltale shit. So, the Telltale Games uh, scenario. God, I so work. We, I, I, uh, shit went down at work and we left early on Friday. Uh, and then all of a sudden I saw an article saying Telltale Games is closing down. Now, before any of us <laughs> go into all of this shit that's gone down, let's start with you, babe. When you first heard Telltale Games is closing, what did you initially think? Well, because I don't normally play Telltale Games. Right. Like, I never got to play a Wolf Among Us and. I didn't really do the Walking Dead games. Uh -huh. I mean, like, I knew people that had played it, but I didn't play them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there like, well, it's a shame, but at the same time, I'm not familiar enough with it. Right. To where I'm just like, okay, I could have seen that. Right. Happening. So, I don't know. For me, like, out of the three of us, I, I don't know. I'm, I might have been kind of the least affected, I guess. Well, I mean, at first glance, and then you started hearing all the details, and you're just like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. Um... Now, May, when you initially saw it, what did you think when you first saw the articles going around? I just, it was really sad. I mean, I, I've i only ever played Season 1 of The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and I played part of The Wolf Among Us. I never beat it. The Wolf Among Us was probably my favorite. And that's all I played. I, I never played any other games, so I just initially was sad because yeah. I, I thought other games were good, but I didn't have any other feeling on the topic other than, yeah, I was just initially sad reading all yeah. the closing down, so... And then we get into the details of everything that went down. So let me let me break down some of the stuff that came out. So the initial story had stated, um, the original story was that, you know, Telltale Games is closing down, uh, and they only had a skeleton crew of 25 people. 
People initially thought that the skeleton crew was to finish up the final season of The Walking Dead, um, but we found out that that wasn't the case. Um, and then the Stranger Things game. Yeah, so they were thinking that they were going to be doing some sort of work on either of those properties, but no. What eventually came out was the skeleton crew is only working on the Minecraft story mode Netflix series. And after episode two of The Walking Dead's final season comes out, that's it. They're not going to be finishing it. The Wolf Among Us 2 and the Stranger Things game are going to be canceled. They were canceled. They're no longer... Um, they're no longer um, making, making them. them. Uh, all of the employees who were laid off were laid off without any severance, which I think was very angering. That was the um, biggest piece of bullshit. That was the biggest... I agree. That was the biggest piece of bullshit. And then May... You were following some shit on Twitter. Do you remember some of the shit you were reading on Twitter at all? Uh, just the main summary is that it was one of the girls that worked there. Pretty mm -hmm. much what you summed up the severance. Yeah. No severance pay, and some people, they, I guess they barely started working there, and they were laid off. Some that people are now unemployed, too. and it, they're, a lot of it's freelance. That's what they said. So. One of the things that I think angered me the most on the Twitter shit that you would, were showing me was the stories of there were employees that started a week ago that relocated to come out here to work and they're now without a fucking job and they've got families and shit and it's like I was honestly surprised because like a month ago or like a couple months ago they made the announcements of The Wolf Among Us 2 which The Wolf Among Us among Telltale Games fans is I was very beloved. A lot of people love The Wolf Among Us, and it definitely left itself open for a sequel to follow more of the comics. Um, and then, you know, Stranger Things, the arguably one of the biggest series Netflix has ever made. Um, and it's one of those things where they just, they got that. I'm like, that's perfect timing. You know, Stranger Things is still in a, in a height of popularity. You know, it spikes when the new seasons come out. But even when it's in the plateau and starting to go down just a little bit, like, they tease information information and stuff like that. And then that whole Telltale thing, I'm like, oh, this is wild. It's like, I thought they were on top of their game. And then I'm reading, like, this article about, oh, yeah, they're only, uh, they weren't able to satisfy what the higher-ups needed. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then I'm reading, like, the Twitter stories of people saying, yeah, that company was so poorly managed, it was fucking atrocious. And I'm like... That is so sad to hear. Um, and then you were telling me, was it Ubisoft that was they're having a meeting on Monday? Yeah, I mean, like they're gonna have dinner, and if anyone worked at Telltale Games wants to join, it's on them, the Ubisoft crew, and they're gonna talk about jobs. Yeah, they basically said people. that was actually the Ubisoft straight was like, hey, yeah, San Francisco branch. Yeah, the the Ubisoft San Francisco branch because they were like, hey, food and drinks are on us. Let's talk about things and get things going. I'm like, that's fucking cool. Uh, there was somebody who had commented saying, please send some people to Epic, which they're the ones who are working on Fortnite, arguably one of the biggest games of the time, of the day, of, you know, the time right now. I'd argue it's this, it's this cycle's Minecraft, because it's accessible to everyone, it's free to play, and the fact that someone from Epic is like, we need QA testers, please send people out here. Uh, somebody from Blizzard said that they need people to work on shit. They're like, hey, we only have a few spots open. There was even like a couple indie studios who were like, hey, we only got like three or four spots open, but send a couple people our way. Like, we want to help. And just kind of seeing the industry kind of rally around these people, um, it's kind of wild, you know? And I I don't know, man. It, it really sucks and it bums me out that those conditions were that bad. Um... I don't know. It just it, it just really it really sucks. And then you had I mean I'm sure you'll just probably double down on what we've already said. But I don't remember the severance pay. And was there a couple other things that really kind of got to you about the whole situation? I think remember. it was mainly just the severance pay because I mean like especially if you the longer you work there, I mean mm -hmm. you earned that package. And like to just be let go without it, any sort of like warning beforehand, mm -hmm. and then they don't even like help you after the fact right it's just like that's that's messed up i was about to say like my grandpa's former company uh they shut down and they got bought out by uh, a european company and they at least got severance 
And it, I mean, and even then, it was shitty severance. But it was something. But they got severance though, so it's like it gave him. It's giving him enough time to find a new job. You know, it's it, it's 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 wild to think that that could ever be a thing. I don't know. I'm just if there's a silver lining, I'm just glad to see companies and studios kind of rallying around these people and kind of sitting there saying, well, you know what? I'm, uh, you know, it's like, you know what? This sucks. Come, come to our company, all that other crazy stuff. We got a lot of things. And you got to think Ubisoft, Ubisoft, they're kind of back at it with Assassin's Creed. Uh, they've got the, um, Far Cry series. Um, God, and then they publish a bunch of shit. I mean, I'm playing South Park Stick of Truth right now, and they publish all the South Park games, but that game's fucking wild. <laughs> um, Robots going, uh, Telltale get wrecked, and Fork no, Knife. got wrecked. Oh, got wrecked. There and you go. Fork Knife. Fork Knife. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it baffled me that that happened to Telltale, especially with all the recent news of games that were supposed to be coming out. Moral of the story, don't oversaturate your own market without innovating at all. Ooh. Hmm. There were some people that were saying that. Um, I'm just baffled mainly because if they knew they were doing that bad, why would they bring on more help? I, 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 have, a, I have a theory. I think... Because you gotta, you gotta see, like, when Walking Dead Season 1 came out, mm-hmm. that thing won a fuckload of awards. And Telltale, for all intents and purposes, is an indie company. You know, in fact, my dad actually played the uh, their Back to the Future game. Which, fun fact, AJ, who's Lotor in Voltron, he's Marty McFly. Huh. The way he got it, it's a funny story. The way he got it is he used to do a Marty McFly impression at parties in college, and he just he I don't know if he knew somebody or what's going on, but he finally got in. He's like, I can do this thing, and. They're like, well, we're going to try to get Michael J. Fox to do it. And Michael J. Fox is like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And so they're like, AJ, get your ass in here. We're doing this. But um, yeah, for all intents and purposes, they were a small company. And they won a fuckload of awards for that game. Then they got The Wolf Among Us, which, I mean, I would argue that's probably my favorite that they've done. Uh, but then they did things like the Game of Thrones game people loved. Um, they did Tales from the Borderlands, which I know Borderlands fans really like that game. Um, I'm still baffled by Minecraft story mode. Hey, Minecraft is a cash cow. Minecraft is a cash cow. Even all these years later, people yeah. are still playing it. Yeah, it's very true. But, um, but yeah, th- but they were announcing that they were getting, like, Stranger Things. They were doing more Walking Dead seasons. I just, it, it baffles me also that their skeleton crew, and then I'll get to my conspiracy theory in a moment. It baffles me that the, the skeleton crew is only working on the Minecraft story mode series for Netflix. And that none of them are at least trying to finish the Walking Dead final season. Because, like, the thing is that, you gotta think, at least it should be in a, if it's in a final season, at least finish it. Yeah. So, I, I don't know the analogy at all. You'll be able to better explain it. That almost sounds like a Xenosaga issue, where they got cut off at the third game, uh, but it's like, they had, like, what, three more games that they could have released or something? Can you refresh my memory okay, with this? Okay, so, yeah, supposedly how it was is they were going to six games. Mm-hmm. Xeno Gear, I think it's Xeno Gears, was supposed to be the fourth game. So it was supposed to tie in because there's a lot of references of Xeno Saga right. and Xeno Gears. Like they take a lot of elements. Right. So they were gonna make two other games, but unfortunately because the second game didn't sell very well, when they made the third one, they eventually just I think it was the company that made it just kinda like not dissolved, but just a lot of the employees went to other companies or right. different sections of Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, some of the people now are working on, you know, Xeno like Chronicles. Xenoblade, yeah. Uh, the other Xeno games that I can't mm. think of. Well, I think it's just Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, and they had Xenoblade yeah. on the Wii U. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that has references to, like, some Xeno saga. So, I mean, Cosmos and Telos are in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Well, it's one of those things where, I mean, you want to talk about a comeback story, the whole uh, Xenoblade Chronicles selling fairly well, and then them getting two, and it seemed to be exploding amongst Nintendo fans again. And I'm sure for people like you and our friend Colin, you're like, fuck yes, more Xeno, please. Mm-hmm. You know, which um, I still need to play all of those fucking games, but I need to 
I need to quit my job and just play video games for a living so that way <laughs> I can actually be able to play all these fucking games. Mm-hmm. But no, my conspiracy is that I think last year they knew they were going under, but they didn't say anything because they're all, well, we got this Stranger Things uh, game coming up and everyone loved The Wolf Among Us. Maybe we'll get hyped for Wolf Among Us too. And when they realized that their sales were still tanking and people, I mean, people cared, but it wasn't helping their sales, they're like, yeah, we're up shit creek without a paddle. All right, dissolve the company, boys. Here's my thing, though. It's like, if you compare, Walking Dead episodes made a lot more money than any sort of jab at Stranger Things. Because granted, people were getting excited about it, but it's nothing compared to the hype for the Walking Dead episode. I would I would argue, even though people have kind of fallen out of watching the show, that people were still excited for the Telltale games because they were still fairly well written. Well, someone said also, I don't know if this attributes to it, but a lot of people weren't buying the games when they first came out because they wanted like what twenty dollars for one episode and a lot of people would wait until the entire whole yeah. season came out and then they would go buy it. I'm I'm guilty of that. I do that with I did that with every Telltale game. I d- I mean I kind of that with Life is Strange. I I kind of broke the rule with Life is Strange because I bought up until I bought it when they were up to episode four and then I remember I was in the middle of streaming it when episode five finally came out because I, I want to say my justification was. Well, by the time episode five comes out, I'll still be going through the game anyway. But yeah, I, I, I generally wait. You know, it's like it's one of those things where yeah, I get where they're coming from. We're like, hey, twenty five dollars for episode one, but you're gonna get two, three, four, and five. But then also it kind of becomes uh, there's delays and stuff. And I actually, if I remember correctly, the Wolf Among it was either the Wolf Among Us or Tales from the Borderlands suffered drastically from delays. Because it's like, oh yeah, I, th- I think it might have been The Wolf Among Us, if my memory serves me right. Because it's like, episode one came out in like November of one year. Episode two came out February of the next year, when it was supposed to go November, December, January, February. They were supposed to already be on episode four. But they were working on another game. Um, it was it, God, it was either it was either The Wolf Among Us or Tales from the Borderlands that that happened. I don't, no, I don't no, it was... T- you know what? I was wrong. It was Tales from the Borderlands because they were releasing Tales from the Borderlands and Game of Thrones around the same time. And w- it was either one of those that they had a massive delay because the other game was coming out. And I'm like, they're not managing their shit well. I would have argued that it probably would have been Tales of the Borderlands anyway just because of look what kind of game they were making. <laughs> Borderlands is nuts. Borderlands There's is a nuts. lot of things you'd have to. And then you're also de- dealing with Gearbox, which has their own fair share of issues, and I'm actually surprised they're still a company. That's a different podcast topic for a different day. But yeah, but my my conspiracy theory is that when they had the restructuring about a year ago, that they already knew the company was going to shut down. But they're like, no, we'll fix it, and they knew they weren't going to fix it. So. Meanwhile, Robot's theory is it's Illuminati. It's Illuminato. That's what's going on. It's just the Illuminati. That's all this going on. Um. In fact, I would also argue, tying into the next topic, the Illuminati is why Troy Baker's not in Tales of Vesperia Definitive. So the last bit of spicy, spicy information, May sent this to me early Friday. So all Tokyo Game Show is going on. Um, a lot of cool shit's been coming out. Uh, they had all the Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff, which I'll get into that in a little while. Uh, we got another Troy Baker thing that Troy Baker is going to be in Death Stranding, <laughs> which that I, Mira and I were watching that trailer in bed this morning. I'm like this looks <laughs> fucking nuts, dude. I, I will straight up said I'm like, yo, he got thrown into this dumpster fire. You're like, but it's not a dumpster fire. I'm like, well, we don't know what the fuck it is. How do I quantify it? I was just basically like, okay, so here we have Troy Baker as Doctor Death, and then we have Norman Reedus as himself. It's Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus. That's what's going on. Which Robit sent me that photo. That's why I was saying that when we were watching the video this morning. Because he sent me this thing. It's in the, the font of Death Stranding. It's like Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus. It's pretty great. That sounds but like a band. It really... It sounds like an indie like pop rock band. It's like Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus. It's like... It's, it's electro. It's, it, oh, it's, it's, it's electro. It's electro indie pop. That's what it is. It's so good. Um, so you had all this stuff going on in Tokyo Game Show. One of the things that came out was... The uh, updated it's it's there was a new English There's gameplay. Seven minutes of gameplay. That's what uh, it is. showing of Vesperia of Patty the new girl, which was never in the three sixty version. Right. And then um, with Patty, you know those scenes that were in it, and they that it was in English. Yes. And because you know, sometimes Tokyo Game Show they'll show a dub trailer. Right. Or something. It depends on you know that year. Mm-hmm. So. 
Yeah, so basically we got... Sorry, I had gotten a message anyway. So basically, May had shown me um, a tweet from Troy Baker. And so when, when the, the footage was first coming out, you had texted me the day before. You're like, yeah, it looks like Grant George is taking No, I watched it that morning. Was it that morning? I watched it that morning, like, on my way to work. I put, I played the video. I, like, minimized the videos while driving, and I listened to the audio. Yeah, that's what it so was. So it was that morning. They so they keep, before the whole Troy Baker thing, though, you're like, yeah. oh, it looks like Grant George is taking over. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the clip, and I'm kind of like, uh, it's a little jarring, but... It uh, is. I will admit it is weird because in the scenes, it has, <laughs> it has, um... Right. You know, Grant George talking, and Grant, not Grant, uh, he's just in the scenes where there's new scenes with Patty, yeah. but apparently a lot of people are saying that makes up a lot of the Vesperia edition because there was, I guess in the original 360 version, there was a lot of stuff that was not added. Yeah. In the PS3 version, they added a lot more. Mm-hmm. So there's a, quite a few scenes in right. the Vesperia definitive, de- definitive edition. Mm-hmm. Where it goes from Grant George talking, you know, especially with Patty, and then it's jarring because you hear that, and then all of a sudden you get into a battle, and it's Troy Baker Baker doing all the sound effects for the battle, Mm -hmm. or you know, things like that. Or you know, if it's not any new scenes with Patty, it's still Troy Baker just talking. Yeah, if it's like if it's a scene or that was originally in the uh, 360 version, yeah, it's pretty wild. But so we kind of assume, okay, Troy Baker's probably busy; he couldn't do it. But then the following day, you sent me this tweet. Oh, yeah. Someone had said, oh, wow, at Troy Baker VA, obviously did not come back to voice Yuri in hashtag Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition for the new scenes. You could hear him in the beginning of the video, but then you check his voice during the patty scenes in the forest, jarring dot, dot, dot. Troy Baker replied, wow, yeah, had no idea about this. Was never approached to do any additional line scenes. Pretty gutted, to be honest. Love this character so much. Would have jumped at the chance to step into those boots again. Which is very angering uh, to hear about. Because Troy Baker has credited Yuri Lowell for why he's doing video games here today. Because that was one of his first main characters in a video game, Yuri Lowell. And even though he kind of has moved on from like anime and JRPGs... He still is like looks fondly on those times and on especially Yuri Lowell. He was like, I, I think even in interviews in the past, he goes, if they ever released more of that game, I would love to do it. And then it turns out they didn't even contact Troy Baker. And one of the things people were baffled is because I guess I don't know if it was an interview they stated or like a long time ago they actually had dub scenes for the PS3 version. Like yeah. With Patty, they got I don't know I don't know who they did for Patty. They never said. But they doubled the original they cast. Had, yeah, they had Troy Baker. They did those additional lines. Yeah. And now people were baffled because, like, well, did those? Did you guys just get rid of all the dub things you did with the PS3 version? Like, it just okay. never came to fruition. I would love to find out what the fuck happened and to those. Then, I don't even know if Troy would even know or any of the characters. They probably don't even know. Only Bam Grind- Bandai Namco knows. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just what makes me surprised of the whole thing is they didn't even ask Matt. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't. You didn't even ask. Matt yeah. To do it because Matt is the one that usually voice. Matt matches. has voice matched for Troy Baker and taken over for. Yeah. I would argue all of his roles that he kind of do. He's taken over for Kanji. He took over for his characters in the. Uh, he did Sigma in. Uh, yeah. The Zero Escape. Zero Escape. Took yeah, you took over for him. Um, God, there, um, there's. I'm sure there's plenty. Uh, Disgaea. He took over for Troy's oh, character yeah, in Disgaea. Oh, okay. You know, he he's taken over, and the fact that they didn't even get Matthew Mercer. But yet they were able to get people like Sam Regal back. And um, Michelle Ruff. And Michelle Ruff, yeah. yeah. And, um, whoever did Raven and, well, Patty's new one, but who did Carl or even... Uh, they got all of the Raven, old cast. Judith. You know? Yeah, they got all of the old cast but Troy Baker, and Troy Baker's taken to Twitter saying, yeah, I was never contacted about this and it hurts. And I'm like, that's fucked up. At least I know, for example, when they've replaced... Troy Baker in an Atlas game, they've at least reached out. You know, people are, you know, I'm not going to lie, they're probably going to replace Troy Baker for Vincent. for Vincent when Captain Full Body comes out, which Captain Full Body we've been getting a lot of shit about too. Um, but it's one of those things where they're probably going to replace him, but they're at least going to ask, hey, I know you're busy, would you want to come back for this? And probably be like, I'd love to, but I can't. Um, but also, Atlas would be the first one to say, hey, Matt, come on in. It's probably the, it's like the whole thing, like, 
apparently, like, they don't even know if she's going to be Catherine again. Because she's probably either too busy or just... Like, I guess for some roles, like, some voice actors just don't have an interest in doing it anymore. So that's why they usually, like, pick someone else to do it. That's what The I've only read. thing that I could ever see Laura being too busy for for that is, like, with her child or True. with Critical Role. So my thing... Um, but, like, for Catherine? I think... I'd have to look at the timing. Because I know the whole thing, like, she's not even re in Persona anymore. They I got Ashley say, Birch to do her now. I want to say... It's the same with uh, Lucina in Fire Emblem. They don't even have Laura doing her anymore. It's Ashley now that does Lucina. What, was Ashley the one that had to... Uh, Ashley's the one that had to bail from Steins Gate yeah. and Attack on Titan to because she's too busy and had a bunch of personal shit going on. I um, wouldn't be surprised she if they can't get it. She's still away. No, she, she's permanently given up those roles. So you basically like I'm no longer these voices. Apparently, from what people are saying, though, they might do that whole thing. Like with originally, um, I can't remember what simulcast it was for an anime. They had a voice actor not do those roles, but then when they went back and did it on DVD, for the DVD. they got the original voice actor back. So they don't know if they're gonna do that with Ashley. They, if they, they could they do might, that. Yeah. The DVD, they might get her back, or she's just. Well, I've heard there's anymore. people like Patrick Seitz that he straight up said the reason that he, he straight up said that the Funimation simulcast are why he barely works with Funimation anymore. Oh, because he doesn't have time to do it. Yeah, right? it's like their turnaround is so quick. Yeah, and don't have time to do I it. mean, it'd be one thing if, and I'm I am baffled, especially if they're like, for example, like Bungo Stray Dogs. That's all LA voice actors. The Tales of Zestiria anime that was all LA voice actors. I'm surprised they just don't have a studio out here. Because you would think, especially with all the Simon casting that they're doing, that it would probably be, you know, less of a burden off of the Texas. I mean, still give a majority of them to Texas. Be like, hey, we got 15 shows coming out here. Texas is going to take 10. LA is going to take 5. Yeah, but it could also be, like, maybe not cost effective. We don't know. I don't know. They don't really don't know. We don't know how it works. But you could also have Robbie Damon in more dubs if you did that. <laughs> you could, yeah. Granted, like, he works, I guess, with Biz. Yeah, he's Sailor a, Moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a big Biz person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Biz has Sailor Moon, right? Yes. yes okay. Viz is the one that's done Sailor Moon. They've recently yes. done One Punch Man. They did also Matsu-san. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're the ones oh, doing yeah. o- Otomatsu-san, <laughs> which that was a dub I didn't know was coming. I'm just waiting for Robbie to be in that show, too. I'm sure he's going to roll up. I'm sure he's, he's gonna, probably going to be, like, maybe a side character. Or something. Probably. He's going to roll yeah. up somewhere. Yeah. Probably some dude with some sick ink or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, it just that whole Troy Baker thing baffles me, and it kind of kind of angers me that they wouldn't at least reach out. And of course, like the whole silicon that one thread, I was I didn't even get through all these comments. Yeah, you many. were telling me about it's that. It's wild. A lot of people are saying like it's crazy, like just mm-hmm. because like I said, people are saying like, well, a lot of people. Sorry, I'm trying to order it No, it's okay, it's okay. It's a okay. lot of people are saying, like, they didn't even bother asking Troy because Troy's price is way too high nowadays. And it's like, why would you bother? And then, you know, some people are on, you know, it's uh, both sides are arguing for. Like, some people are saying, well, his price is too high, why would you bother? And then other people are saying, like, you could at least take 15 minutes and ask. Even if he yeah. says no, at least they ask. And then people are yeah. saying, and now they're wondering, like, about Atlas, if they're even going to do the same thing. Like, are they going to even try to get Troy to be Vincent? Are they going to get mad? Or are they just going to get someone entirely... We, we just don't know. It's just the whole comment section for that thread in Silicon Air is, it's everywhere. It's yeah. crazy. And I've seen some people say stuff like, well, either I, like, I'll go just play my 360 version or like, I'll just, because the definite version has both dual audio. I've like, seen, I've seen a lot like, of people. they're canceling their pre-orders. Yeah. 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 Some people are saying like, I'm just going to play it in Japanese then. Because there are people can't. who played it in English. They're like, yeah. I can't deal with this jarring back so and forth. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I said, either they're going to play a 360 version or they're just going to go to the Japanese version yeah. and play a definite version. You know, it's just, it's, yeah. this thread is so many. It's just crazy. And then a lot of people mentioned the whole thing with Matt. It's like, why wouldn't you get Matthew Mercer to match, voice match Troy? And, you, and the thing is that, I, 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 I don't know where I saw it, but someone's like, oh, he's too busy with Critical Role. I'm like, bitch, that didn't stop him from coming back to be Yusuke and dancing in Starlight. Yeah. He can come and redub lines to voice. Because the way that everyone... It didn't re- stop him from coming back to be Levi. Yeah, yeah. He, he's doing simul dubbing for Levi in the new season of Attack on I Titan. Mean, I know, like, when we talked about it in text, I, I did say, like, well, maybe, like, uh, Matt was too busy, LOL. You know, I jokingly said yeah. that. Maybe that's why they didn't ask Matt either. I don't know. It's just... 
there's sometimes when it comes to dubbing things, it just I get curious and what makes them decide these who who decides on these decisions like of uh, uh, you know yeah. like who decided well maybe I don't know if like maybe Grant they maybe Grant George like he was just one of the voice actors like that happened to see the audition maybe and he tried out and the casting director was like that's the guy we want you know I don't know I don't know how dubbing works for for video games and stuff like that it's just yeah. it's just weird to see why they wouldn't ask Matt my my thing is that. I'm willing to believe Troy Baker would have negotiated his rates to come mm-hmm. back for someone yeah, for a character that he I loves. I think people said that in the thread too. Like he would, I'm sure he would have negotiated because I guess there was somebody brought that point up. I think it was for Persona for Gold, and I think he actually did that. Yeah, he negotiated. They, you know, he was willing to um, take a lower rate just to come back for Persona for Gold. I know he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars on oh, these yeah. big name games, but I'm also willing to bet that something like coming back for Tales of Vesperia Definitive would be a passion project for him. It's him coming back to the character that was one of his first main characters in a video game. Yeah, I mean, he's still, I'm sure he would have done something. Absolutely. But, you know, it's yeah. just they didn't ask him. They, I they don't know, it's a whole Matt. I almost tweeted to Matt the same thing, like, or, like, how that person did. I almost yeah. tweeted to Matt saying, I'm surprised they didn't ask you to be... It's like, to you've been Troy, you've been known to match Troy, Troy in the past. Because yeah. I didn't know if you'd answer me, but I'm... I'm tempted to do that to see what he says. I, I would, I would, I would, I would say do it. And if he were to reply, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if he went. They never asked me either. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, Namco Bandai has had their fair share of controversies. Oh yeah. And I feel like this is the next controversy. Yeah. Like, and it, yeah. It sorry, just, go ahead. It just baffles me. Like certain games, if they choose to ju- dub or not dub, it's just. It's weird, like, okay, Sword Art Online, it's popular, but yet... They don't dub They it. don't dub those games. Yeah. Like, they'll dub Tales games. The only Tales game they have never dubbed, and that's why I don't really play it that much, is the Tales of Hearts on the Vita. I try. Right. I yeah. try playing. I, that's why you never saw me ever buy it. I asked it as a gift. Hmm. I tried playing that. It's just, to me, it was so dis jarring to me because I hear Japanese and I have to read the subtitles. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind reading subtitles. I will watch sub anime any day. Yeah. You know, you've seen me do that. I will do that. But yeah. with video games, it's just it's I when I play video games, I'm playing it for the story. Yeah. I'm there to immerse, you know, myself in it mm-hmm. here. And yeah. if I have to listen to Japanese and I have to read subtitles, that takes me out of the story for a video game. Because then I have to stop, right. read subtitles, see what they're saying, and then go back to the story. And just with me, I just, I, I don't like doing that. I like mm-hmm. hearing the my native tongue spoken yeah. in a video game. I like to hear, you know, how they react to certain scenes. How, you know, they're just so passionate about this one thing in a scene. So that's why most times sub games, I won't really play. That's why I don't play any of the sort of online games. Right. Because it's not dubbed. I don't. It's this whole situation, honestly, has mm-hmm. kind of pegged my excitement for definitive now. I mean, and, I'll, I mean you're still gonna get I it. I am still. I was saying, yeah. I'm still gonna get it because I have a 360 version. I waited so long for it to be on a PS4. Yeah. PS4 because I was like, I'm not an Xbox person. Yeah. I only bought that Xbox because I wanted to play this right on 360 because I had never beaten it. Mm-hmm. But now that it's coming on the PS4, I'm still gonna buy it. I'm still yeah. gonna play it. I mean, I'm still, I mean, I'll admit, I'm still going to be kind of bummed when I hear those new scenes and it's not Troy Baker. Yeah. Or it's not Troy Baker or Matthew Mercer. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't hate Grant George. I think he's done I, some roles I do like. I, it's it's, it's not, just not right. I would say, yeah, he doesn't just, sound like he matches. It's just, yeah, it sounds really jarring to hear from Troy Baker to uh, Grant George. But I'm still going to play it. Yeah. I'm still going to love the game. It's just, it's saddening to see that they didn't even ask Troy. The thing, the thing. they asked yeah. Matt. The thing for me is that what was Matthew Mercer known for back in the day? He was known as Leon and the guy taking over for Troy right. Baker yes. before he started getting like yeah. Chrome and do Levi you, and stuff like that. Do you remember when Zillia came out? Everyone thought that was Troy. Everyone thought it was Troy. Because I was like, no, that's Matt. Yeah. yeah. He, sounded, he sounds like Troy. And then you know the voice because I was that same person. I was like, this sounds like Troy, but it can't be Troy because he's too busy for these JRPGs. And then, you know, when it came out, it was Matthew Mercer. I was like, oh, okay, it's the guy that sounds like Troy Baker. Right. It's like the whole thing with, um, you know, if Johnny ever stopped wanting to do anime, Micah could easily fill in for Absolutely, him. Absolutely, Because yeah. Micah sounds a lot like Johnny Young Bosch. Which, speaking of Johnny Young Bosch, he is coming back as a hero. Oh, is he the guy back? Yeah, he's back. The <laughs> whole original crew. Oh, they even got Dave. him in Langdon? Yeah, he's back as is Dante. Vir- is Virgil in the game? They haven't shown Virgil. Oh, okay, I'll say, because then they might either get Daniel Southworth or write somebody entirely new. 
I don't know. I, I they could the Capcom may work their magic. And yeah, um, yeah. that's good though. I'm glad because Ruben actually does like Dante. He like, that's loves a Dante. Dante. Yeah. He's so drastically different from Dante. He's he the him. total opposite. He yeah. is. He really. I've met him in person. He's very different from Dante. That's cool though. But so yeah, the whole Vesperi thing is crazy. TLDR. It's sad. I'm still gonna play it and buy it. Yeah. I will still give. At least they're dubbing it. That's all that that I. I may just. Me. I may just go the route of. I might be one of those people that just plays it in Japanese as much as yeah. I would miss hearing the rest of the cast. Like, yeah. here's the thing. Hearing Sam Regal in those new scenes makes me so happy that he's back as Flynn. But then, if you play in Japanese, you won't hear the love, justice, sexuality line from Raven. That's very true. Oh man. Well, Robot's right. Robot sitting here talking his shit. He's like, "Am I fr- is Robot free yet?" It's hard to hear. It's hard to play Overwatch without hearing. Sword Art Online is also garbage, which I agree. Uh, you could, uh, could just get over it. It's fucking voice acting. <laughs> fucking Robot the Troll over here. That's how I know. I'm just joking because you put that little face. It's hard to play Overwatch without hearing babies. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like a baby cry thing. Yeah, basically. Um, but yeah, it's just it's crazy. So that's all the spiciness that I got, but I also have a pretty great story. So first podcast, we did all those Hard Times articles that were kind of eh. They're kind of okay. I, I'm never going to have us go through each of those again. But this one was really fucking funny. You found this one on Friday, and it was an article Hard Times put out. Yeah, one of my favorite ones so It's far. really fucking good. I'll let you read the name of the article. <laughs> it says, Take It Master Ads, $5.15. Fuck you, fee. Yeah. So basically... <laughs> Buying tickets from Ticketmaster sucks anyway. It does. But basically, it's they've added the fuck you fee today, adding an additional ex- or adding an extra charge of five dollars fifteen cents on all tickets purchased online. Company officials confirm, uh, exerting total dominance over <laughs> concert goers is our company's mission. <laughs> we were not truly, uh, if we're not truly the masters of our customers, even for one second, then Ticketmaster has no place in in this business. It's new people will let our customers know how we truly feel feel about them. My favorite part is at the bottom of the oh, article yeah. where it says um... The final... Oh yeah, no, here's the The fee will fund Ticketmaster's newly formed Fuck You division, <laughs> which aims to make future or future fees just as incomprehensible. Uh, uh, obscuring all reasons why fee... Or, yeah, obscuring all reasons why fees exist or how they arrived at that price. My favorite thing is the very last one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it turned out to oh, yeah. Tickets can be purchased in person at all venue box offices, but will be subject to a $7 how fucking dare you look at me in the eyes of scum fee. That's <laughs> such a good <laughs> fee. Oh, man. You read that to me? And, and I'm thinking about it, too, because we're trying to... We're, I mean, I don't know if we're ever going to get him, but we're going to go see Mike Shinoda in November. And we're trying to figure out those, like, meet-and-greet VIP tickets. They are sold out, but we're trying to see if other places can have them. But the thing is, that, like, you had to check places like Ticketmaster and stuff like that, and I'm glad that I bought the tickets through Live Nation because we don't have it. I mean, there's still venue fees that make you go, damn, that's there, fucking wild. Akari is here. Yo, shout out to Akari. I never understood the reason why there were fees on tickets. Like, I have I, just, I'll buy, I, like, I bought, like, you know, when you buy movie tickets, I bought us movie tickets. Yeah. There's fees. I bought tickets for us to see Vocaloid. There's fees. Oh, yeah. I, I get the concert ones because they list them out I never understand why movie tickets have a convenience fee what is the point you're just sending the convenience is you going to the fucking movie is is there a fee to be convenient because I'm doing it online and not being like every money out there and buying it in person I just don't understand convenience fees in the first place it's not convenient no it's not it's It's the exact opposite of a convenience fee it's an inconvenience fee especially if they try to do the whole thing of well I see you bought it online but it's not processing or some shit it's just like I have it right here the email says I just never understood. Yeah, reading that whole Ticketmaster fuck you fee. I'm just like, they might as fucking well at this point. Yeah, that's pretty much, I see it, that's what the fees I see it as now. Yeah. I'm about to say, before the ticket, before the the fees for Mike Shinoda, they were like $45. After fees and shit, or like they were $49.99. And I'm like, okay, that's actually pretty good. After fees, it was like over $65. I'm like, you're yeah. charging me 15 fucking dollars in fees and shit. Yeah, like, just to order online. The, the the tax was like, not even a third of that. The rest of that was all fucking like, venue fee and convenience fee. And I'm like, this makes no fucking sense, one thing, dude. One, <laughs> one ticket I'll buy that convenience fees always makes me mad for is mm. AX tickets. Yeah. Because AX, for some reason, you could apparently, like if you buy tickets to like a vet bride or something, you can disable that fee. If you choose so. But AX don't care. 
They're gonna charge you for the butt to yep. make sure you get. They'll the charge you eighty dollars to see one band. Yep. You, you wanna go? See, you yeah. wanna get into our venue? Uh, you know, pay this plus a five dollar fee. Whatever. We don't care. We just want your money. Robot, or Kari Robot. asks, "Is there a fee for having eyes to see the movie?" Chowder made it really hard to type that. By the way. <laughs> That's probably what the movie fees are. Hey, you got two eyes. We need a, It's an eye fee. Yeah, it's I, an insurance on your eyes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, convenience fees, especially for movies, I hate. I don't understand the appeal. Yeah. Or not the appeal. I don't understand the point. There's no appeal to them. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand the point. The point, of yeah. Convenience I fees. It's dumb. I don't like it, yeah. So, but but I feel like that Hard Times article just, just hits the nail on the head. Fuck you, fees. That's what they're called. <laughs> the how fucking dare you look me in the yeah. eyes, you scum. Fee? Is there a bigger fee for needing glasses? Ooh, yeah. Yes. They, well, that's, what three, that's why 3D movies are more. You well, need no, I mean just glasses, like for your eyes. Well, I know. What I'm saying though, as a joke, because you know, oh, movies okay. you have to put right, on yeah. glasses. There you go. There's your feet. Pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Curry's like, is that why? Yes. More fees because yes. I wear glasses. Yes. Damn. Gotta make sure you see the movie. It's wild. Gotta see all the details. It's, yeah. it's dumb. Speaking of wild, let's talk about all the Kingdom Hearts three nonsense that's been coming out, and some depressing news about the one of the main Square Enix composers. Uh, we'll get to. We'll, 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 we'll do the, let's do that part first so so uh, how do you pronounce his no, fucking no Uematsu I'm sorry I've never known how to pronounce the name so he is officially stepped down uh, from doing any sort of music because he's really sick I don't remember what he's sick do you guys remember what he's been sick with uh, did they even say what he was sick with at this point the article I saw I didn't see anything but right. I think people are speculating he's just overworked yeah it makes sense which honestly, it's it's kind of a common thing for especially mm-hmm. like animators and whatnot. They're constantly getting overworked and they're right. getting sick. Mm-hmm. And some of them, that's why they die like in their fifties or sixties because they're being overworked. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like that whole thing came down, it came out, and everyone's kind of upset about understanding. It makes me sad because I'm just sitting there like it would be like, it would be like the thing of like if. Uh, Utada Hikaru wasn't coming back just because she decided to walk away from it. It would hurt. Yeah. Oh. She's been with the Kingdom Hearts games since the first one, but it would make sense. Yeah. You mentioned that there was actually a thing a while ago, like before 3 came out, the longest time they had a hard time getting her back because she, apparently, like originally, due to contract fees or something, she was originally not supposed to come back from Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, it was just a whole thing. Yeah. Like, she wasn't going to come back, and they were going to have to find somebody else. That so. would have killed me a little bit. But a lot just, of people would have been. But angry. I think it was back then, because it was her own choice, like I said, or a contract, yeah. or something. It was just something contract wise, like they just were not negotiating with her. Like she wanted a certain fee or something like that. Well, you don't have to worry about that now because she had the song on the soundtrack. Yeah. Kara yeah. says, "Oh shit, hope he recovers okay." Same. But we, even then, me and Chrissy still agree. We don't see how the theme song for three still fits in with Kingdom Hearts. We think for some. Well, because the argument that I had with Romano when we first got the full version of the opening was, for 1 and 2, we kind of knew how it fit, because we had animation to go with it. Well, this, also... This, this time, we just have the gameplay. Yeah, because even then, like, before when I heard the songs, it's because when I, I, that's when I played the game. That's yeah. the first time I ever heard it, because the song came out before the game. I don't Yeah, it, people so are I'm, speculating. I'm saying, like, how does this fit? I just go for song. Because one of our friends, like, we were having the argument, one of our friends was like, I hate the new theme, it doesn't fit, it's not like a Kingdom Hearts theme, and I was just like, well, we don't have any animation to go with it, we don't know how the theme is supposed to connect with it. Yeah, that's why. For all we know, once we we have animation for it, it could it could piece together, and we would be like, oh my god, this is the best Kingdom Hearts opening I've ever heard. (laughs) Yes! But for right now, we just have gameplay and teasers. We don't know. We also... Sorry, go ahead. The first, uh, just hearing it, I heard it. I, I just, right now, I just don't like it because I don't know how it fits. Maybe after I play it, I'll be like, okay, I like it. Or even after I play it, I'll still be like, I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah. I'm just going to be the, the, the skeptic because I don't it's, think any of that music makes sense even in the first two games. Well, here's the thing. Like, <laughs> I think Have you heard Simple and Clean the lately? The English version or the Japanese version? Both. So... I guess, yeah, even, like, I think in an interview, like, the English version, she even, Utali Carter said, I don't know what this means. I have it's, no idea it, what the song means, it's, yeah. It's just gibberish. Like, the first, this first song, like, Simple and Clean, the lyrics, half of them are just gibberish. So how they can, kind of are, yeah. How is, how can you make someone feel simple and clean tonight? Like, how does one do that? Yeah. So that could clean. be referencing purity, though. Like, you make me feel pure. 
before. I, I, just, I never understood like, that, that That line is simple. Like, I could see, uh, I could, I could see how they could translate that. But the rest I, of it is I simple. never understood the line of, it's like... The meeting your father one. I'm like, how does this have to do with the smile? There's no fathers. I don't, I don't get yeah. it. Yeah. It's just half those lines, like I said, she even said they're like, they make no sense. I think it's mainly just because the Japanese track has one set of lyrics and then the English versions have another set of lyrics and the English ones don't make sense, but yeah. the Japanese ones might. Well, at least they didn't pull a Final Fantasy 13 where they replaced the entire song with something entirely. With an, with it, yeah. With a, a poppy song. Is it Linoa in, Lewis? Yeah. Yes, in thir- and in 13 too, it's different, I think. Yeah. They changed think, it completely. And then there's a whole. Tells of controversy, like okay, so tells the abyss and tells of Estria don't have words in their lyrics because they don't they have the money to afford it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's right. Oops. Empty See, what we, it's split. an empty bottle. But the thing is though, when I've heard the lyrics for both um is Estria and Abyss, I don't like them. I you like the instrumentals, I yeah. I guess Although so. when Amelie sang the opening Estria, that's actually good. I just don't like whoever sings it to Estria. Right. Like, otherwise, I prefer the instrumental. Robit, take them with food. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to, Robit. Be Please good. do. But with all the Kingdom Hearts stuff, so there was a big old trailer that came out, and Mira specifically is losing her shit because not Roxas was at the end of the Fuck trailer. you, it is Roxas. There's so many theories saying that that's not actually Roxas, and I'm I'll like... I'll just bring my son home. I just want him home. May, do you think it's actually Roxas? I, I haven't seen this trailer. I don't know. It's just he's standing there in an organization outfit at the end of the trailer. Oh, see. Ventus never wore it though. That's Vanitas. Vanitas would have worn something like How that. How many fucking versions of this dude are there? Oh my god. Because Roxas wore the organization cloak. Uh. Ventus never did. Ventus looked more like he wore Roxas's outfit. Vanitas was like he wore, I guess, kind of more of a heartless. Uniform, I guess is how you'd describe this it. This hurts my fucking brain. But yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen any new trailers for Kingdom Hearts 3. And also, I, I, the only thing I know, I've seen clips of Big Hero 6, that's it. Otherwise, I haven't watched anything. Everyone is Sora and Roxas is what Kari I just want my son to come home. Oh, man. Even Kairi is Sora and Roxas. Everyone. God damn. I mean, Big Hero 6 world looks lit as fuck. I'll definitely that tell you that blade. shit. That's that Keyblade looks sick, dude. I'm just hoping they get back the original cast for the game. That's what I really we are all, we're all Sora and Roxas on this blessed day. <laughs> Damn. That's what I just want to hear. I just want to hear Hero, at least Hero and Bay and Max be the sound the same. Hell yeah. Please. They get the two voice actors. I mean, if they have to change like Honey Lemon and the others, I understand that. But, my, you know. my thing is, I remember when they had the trailer come out with the Pirates World, and you're just like, We've come a long way from KH2 voice acting. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. I, told, I dropped the knowledge that it uh, Will Turner is Christian Freeman. Yeah, it is! And you're like, it's so cringy. I'm like, that's like, some cringe, dude. Oh, hey, you know what? Kristen is trying his best. Here's the thing, though. It's like when you're so used to hearing Orlando Bloom and then you hear anybody else doing Will, you're right. just kind of like, oh, but no. Well, I mean. Orlando it's not as bad as Johnny and Jack, though. Because without Johnny, I don't see how anyone could have watched Which is, Jack. it's funny because the original, like, back in the day, they made a Pirates of the Caribbean game for the PS2. They actually got Johnny Depp to be. But they couldn't get him for Kingdom Hearts. Because he's in debt, and isn't he, like, in well, right at, now? Right? Not at that time, though. Well, well, for now, right I'm now, he is, yeah. Now, maybe, March yeah. 3, though, yeah, isn't he, like, in trouble? He needs the money, yeah. Yeah, that's why he's in there anyway. The outfit is a bl- little bland compared to the Big Hero 6 crew's superhero's outfit, since he just has a visor. <laughs> but otherwise, I dig it. And who knows, maybe he gets another. And yes, Pirates, the pirate world looks bomb. Y'all are losers. <laughs> I'm trying to make it. We're, we're not I, denying it. I know either. for a fact I'm going to have to have a video of I'm you sorry. guys trying to break down the fucking story. Because this, from what I've heard, this is all there's sorts already, of... There's already a video on YouTube trying to break down all the games. You told me about it. Yeah, and it sucks It's like already. so long. <laughs> I just... It, the, the Kingdom Hearts is like the Metal Gear Solid of JRPGs. I can't get a grip on what the <laughs> fuck so, goes on. So here's the ultimate question. What? How come nobody, how come none of us have pre-ordered it? She's already looking at the pre-orders. Yeah, she's trying to figure out which version she's gonna pre-order. I might get, I might see if like sales happen, and if that, if they do come down a little bit, I might try. If not, for pre-orders, they're not gonna. If come not, down. say for pre-orders, no. Well, because here's the thing: if not, then like somewhere around Christmas, I'll just say fuck it. And I'll say it. yeah. When it comes, when you pre-order games, yeah, prices will never go down. You yeah. Have to pay a little bit. You have to pay the full price if you want the game. 
basically. I'm I'm planning on pre-ordering. I just haven't done it yet. I need to I need to pay off Persona Five. I'm also trying to figure out if I want to do the ultimate version, like right. with all the games, right, right, since right. I have the remix. Wait, already. there's a version. Where's that at? There's one. It has 2.8. No, where got, where do you order it from? Uh, it's uh, it's we saw it on PSN, PSN, yeah. Oh, that's like okay. It's like the hundred dollars. Oh, version that's why y'all talking digital. I'm talking physical here because I'm a physical nerd. I was looking because he was looking up Red Dead Two, oh. which I which I pre-ordered Red Dead Two, and I'm super I excited. Think, well, I think the reason I've never why... actually pre-ordered their GameStop, so I wouldn't. Okay, so what you do is because it's a what uh, depending on what version of a game you get, because it really depends. Like certain times, if there's a collector's edition, they have you put down a certain amount. Normally, the you minimum, guys keep talking. I'm gonna the go normal, to the normal the normal minimum fee for a video game is five dollars. Mm-hmm. You pay five. Most people don't like printing GameStop. I don't care either way. But basically, what you do is you put down the money, and then well, you could you can go every week, however many times you want to go. You go and you say, "I'm paying off a pre-order. I'm going to put money down a pre-order." They'll look up your information. You give them money. That's oh, it. Okay. And then what they do is the day of, or how I don't know how they do it now for pre-orders. Um, usually I don't know. They don't do this with me anymore. They used to would send me texts or just kind of call and just say, "Hey, your pre-order is ready." Oh. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you do. You just put money down. GameStop's like one of the few places I know that you can do it in increments. Like in Amazon or PSN, you have to do it in full. Mm-hmm. So that's the easiest way. And you went to go to the bathroom, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, you left us. But yeah, pre-ordering GameStop's pretty easy, but a lot of people don't like to do it. Rob, it says pre-orders don't go down. There's like a million things I want to pre-order, but Rob keeps buying records. Kari says, I don't know if I'm going to pre-order. I want to, but I d- and I definitely want to play it. I just... Don't know if I want slash can drop the money yet. Anything if you can't, I mean, eventually, you know, it is gonna go down in okay. price. It really is. I mean, they did that with back when I remember back in the day. I put well, I had two for the podcast. That was <laughs> um, well, I took a bathroom break, so I yeah. Uh, okay, question. Real talk. Are you ever gonna drink anything other than alcohol on a podcast? I've always wondered. sure. Okay, I always <laughs> wondered that. I'm not dragging on you. I just always wondered that. It's if just you, an observation. Yes. I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, eventually, even if they don't put it down anytime soon, it's going to go down. Because I remember when I bought Kingdom Hearts 2 back when I was a wee little weeb. And I love Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> wee little weeb. Wee little weeb. I bought it full price, and then, like, I think months later, it went down a little bit. So eventually, it's going to go down in price, even if you can't afford it. Yeah. Robot said, good news. One of the things I wanted to pre-order is out of stock, that's and I can't sad. get it anywhere. That's a That's, I don't know if that's oh, good news. speaking of pre-orders, this, this was, a, I'm on the fence about, so I was originally going to pre-order the collector's edition of Asperia, but apparently, compared to the UP, European version, ours sucks ass. Damn. We don't even get good stuff with ours, and I'm like, do I really want to spend $100 on it? Right. Um, Robot says, bad news, it's out of stock, so I can so I can never get it. Rip. It could just be on back order. Who knows? Or it might just stay out of stock. Yeah, it could for, they're just out it's of gonna per, it's gonna be in a perpetual state of out of stock, basically. Uh, that's or it how just we, depends on what where you're looking. Yeah, or what he's what is he getting? I don't know what he is. That's very Probably true. a record. Either a record or like the super collector's edition of Fallout seventy six. Li- oh yeah, limited mm. to. Oh, that oh. was me when I would pre order Tales. Of, oh, that was me when I wanted to originally pre order a collector's edition of Fire Emblem, which I never right. had because it sold out. Oh, then again, I just ended up buying the game itself, and that's I realized us. I didn't need it, so. Yeah. That's us with figures. <laughs> you guys were in oh, figure hell. Oh, Deku and Bakugo so, hell. I don't know if you heard, so you didn't order through PlayAsia, right? Uh, I ordered through JLS. Okay, because PlayAsia, apparently a lot because orders got canceled. Damn. They did not have enough stuff. So that's I wild. haven't heard anything about mine yet. Yeah, so, so I would say keep an eye on it, because you might sometime, I mean, I haven't heard anything on mine either. They could just cancel it. I was going to say, because I know in the group... Yeah, that it's was, records, like, yeah. Solo. In the group that I was in, they were showing a uh, link for J-List, so I just went through Yeah, there. so I would just say, yeah, just keep an eye on just what I'm doing yeah, mine, because yeah. I pre-ordered it on a different website that uh-huh. any day they could just be like, Sorry. What site did you... Uh, Anime NPC. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that was one place that they offered, like, uh, that you could pre-order it, so I got it there. I didn't. I don't normally pre-order anything on J-List. He, here's all it came with the, those those Kiss records he wanted to get came with four albums each on colored vinyl colored vinyls look so sick uh, four 12 by 12 inch posters uh, slip mat slip for turn turntable buttons, buttons coasters, coasters and shirts. that's depressing dude I love when bands do colored vinyls but at the same time I'm scared to even see my thing is just like I don't have a record player right so they would just be sitting there kind of gathering dust 
into it. I, I would eventually go the hipster route of getting a record player, yeah. yeah. And but even then, even then, it's like, where do we put it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so speaking of pre-orders, mm-hmm. so remember I bought y'all my Iron Man movie tickets a month ago? Yeah! Um, six of them. Well... We'll do the My Hero Academia movie stuff now because I accidentally erased the topic I was about to go into. Oh, well, we'll no, let's get let's get the My Hero Academia okay, stuff okay, going. So yeah, speaking of pre-orders, I speaking of pre-orders. Day of, I pre-ordered six movie tickets for y'all with my credit card to, for us to go see the movie. To make um, sure we were all together. Yeah. Yeah. I could have been like, I was my ticket Fuck for you guys. I could have been like, for me and Crystal. Okay, bye guys. You're on your own. It's like, hey guys, they're up for pre- they're up for pre-order. Go buy them. Go buy them. Yeah. I'm just getting one for me and Crystal. Bye. I By could, the way, we're in this you. room, greatly, this seat. I greatly appreciate <laughs> you. Hopefully you get tickets. lucky and have a seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do on that day, I want to leave early because it's not assigned seating. It's just general. So I'm right. Sure Stay together. We have to, we have to okay. make sure we get there early so there's six seats next to us because what might happen is if we go too late, we're going to get separated. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to sit in different spots. We need to figure out what time Crystal and Brad are coming over. Well, they're coming the day before. The day before. We talked about oh, it. Oh, the day before. We talked oh. about it on Final Fantasy last night. Um, basically. So they're coming, wait, wait, they're coming the day before now? I thought they were coming the day of. That's what I thought too. So I don't know if you were on the chat, but Crystal was talking she said, I guess originally they were going to come day of, but now I guess they want to try and come the day before. I don't know because I remember you. I remember yeah. you were talking. You were saying like you get out of work at blah blah blah. Yeah, because we were talking. We were talking about mm-hmm. Saturday. Like I get out of work. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Saturday. Okay, then I got it totally wrong. Then maybe they are still planning to come. Saturday. We'll need to figure it out. Yeah, because yeah. I made mean, the comments. At least I don't work Sunday, so we could stay up late. Uh, yeah. Wait, I was okay. We better miss it. No, it's all good. Well, it's then all good. I'll, I'll text we'll them like out. later and ask like what's the deal because. Well, I'm, we're getting on fourteen tonight, though, right? Yes, I'm just saying. Yeah, so we'll be able to talk about it tonight. Later. Yeah. I would say we'll be <laughs> all be on 14 later, so we can just all talk about it yeah, verbally. But yeah, we just have to figure yeah. out because we need to get there as soon as possible. Because, like mm-hmm. I said, I want to make sure there's six seats because I don't know how many people are going to be in that theater. And that's there's going to be a fuckload. I know. I there know. Will I mean, be. if it has to be a point of there's just uh, for six of us and there's three seats in one row and three seats in another row, I would just say we'll split mm-hmm. up before you. That works. Yeah. As long as I can see the movie, I'm happy. That's all I can. Basically. But, uh, damn. Um, you also got Kirishima. I do. I'm so excited that I'm going to be working on Casual Kirishima. Well, working on, by that I mean I'm going to be doing Casual Kirishima for the movie. Um, I'm, I'm fucking excited for this movie. It's going to be cool. May, how excited are you for the movie? She's I'm giving, really excited. She's I'm excited. I saw, saw that they were going to show it and they show All Might in like his beautiful, gor- glorious Gorgeous form. They posted recently the All Might glow up, and you're just like, I know. Oof. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so Rope. I'm not gonna tell you. Well, I share. I sent a picture of it. So yeah, there's a scene in the movie where his shirt gets ripped off, and I'm like, damn. May is May is gonna be thirsting during that scene. So She's gonna have to get an go, extra oh. large cup. She's me? gonna make the Roblox Death Town. She's gonna go, oof. <laughs> She's like, I'm weak. There's a splash zone in the road. There's a splash zone with how moist she's going to be after seeing that scene. She'll be like, oh, I can't handle. My booty is ready. Your booty, your (laughs) anus is ready. It's ripe. Ripe for the picking. It's ripe for the, it's ripe for All Might smashing, dude. Bro, it's like, remember when you guys played games? Damn, I remember when I played games. Oh, man, the My Hero Academia game is coming out. And it's coming out. (laughs) I saw it and pre-ordered it because I'm I'm like, I'll wait. No, I get you. I I want it, but... For me, that kind of game, I can wait for right. it to go down. I price. can wait till it comes out because then I don't get Endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to pre-order it. I don't here's need that thing, Endeavor I'll, bullshit. I don't need that shame. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you pre-order it, like, when, or maybe it's free DLC or something, there's Deku free DLC. But regardless, if I pre-order it, I'll just put It's in, the Catch-22. You can get Deku, I'll but you also have to have I'll Endeavor. Just put Endeavor. I'll just be a little dirty. <laughs> I'll just put Endeavor in the back where he'll gather dust. Ooh, nice. The day. Robot did make manage because we were talking about colored vinyls I'll earlier. We were talking about colored vinyls earlier. His uh does this look infected some twenty war some forty one vinyl is clear with green splinters. Splatters. Or splatters. Splinters splatters. splatters? I, I'm looking far away, babe. Listen. Yeah. I know, I'm just like, how would that work but, though? So. Splinters. Yeah, we're excited for the movie. Uh, that movie's gonna be sick. I'm really yeah. excited. I would not be surprised if we did something and related to that. Like, uh, like discussing about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Either a vlog or just us discussing it afterward, doing like a spoiler cast about it, because that shit will be popular. Speaking of discussing, mm-hmm. did you find out about that singer guy? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, last couple podcasts, we've been talking about the whole, uh, the death of Kyle Pavone from He Came as Romans. Last time we talked about it, um, they had said that he had died of an accidental overdose. It's coming out that he, uh, it looks like he died of heroin overdose. What's happened since then? There, there's actually been some updates on this. So we came as Romans announced last week because people didn't know because they were slated to go on tour supporting Bullet for My Valentine. And yeah, right? yes, Bullet for My Valentine is very popular amongst us edge lords. Um, welcome back, Kari. Welcome back, Kari. But yeah, it's one of those things where um, they didn't know if we came as Romans were going to even tour because of the fact that you know Kyle Pavone had died. Um, but they had announced, uh, like a week and a half ago that we're still going to tour. Um, Kyle would have wanted us to tour. This, uh, Rose says Bullet for My Valentine is still a thing. Yeah, they're still releasing records. I mean, damn. I don't know if they're any good. I legitimately haven't listened to them in a while, but I remember their records were good. But anyway, let's see here and there. But, um, so the whole, uh, so we came as Romans. They announced that the rest of the band was going to tour as kind of a celebration of Kyle's life and kind of trying to move on. Uh, they announced that they were going, it's going to be rough, that they're going to continue on. Um, did, um, they played their first show, ironically, in St. Louis, <laughs> your neck of the woods, um, and they played... They had Kyle's stuff set up on stage with a banner that had his name and then his birth date and death date on it. Um, they played the whole set. Their scream vocalist, who actually has done some singing, uh, it looks like he's doing a majority of the singing now. I'm sure the, guitar the guitarists are also helping out and stuff, but um, they're all just, I mean, the, the energy when you see the videos that have come out, of, like when they open, the crowd just fucking erupts, dude. It's like the energy is just unreal. And I'm like, that's... I mean, good for them. Like, good for them for being able to, to, to power through and be like, we're just gonna... We're gonna keep going. It's gonna be very difficult. You know, there's there were some people that had a sentiment that kind of reminded me of, like, what Mike Shinoda dealt with after Chester's death. Of, like, I am not ready to get back up there. And they also had a quicker turnaround time, too. It's like... You know, the Lincoln Park Memorial show was, like, months after Chester's death. This is, like, a, maybe a month after... Not even a month after Kyle died. And they're already pushing along. But the the, video, the videos have come out of them playing their first show together since. And it actually, it, I watched them. They were kind of emotional and heartwarming in a sense of they're honoring their fallen brother and... They have an exclusive shirt that they're selling that uh, all the proceeds of the shirts going to the Kyle Pavone Foundation to help people who are addicts or recovering addicts and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of like when Lincoln Park did the, the Chester uh, shirt and they dedicated or they, they put all the proceeds to the charity that they had opened in, in honor of him. Um, but yeah, it's pretty wild. Good on those guys for continuing on. I think this is the last we're finally going to be talking about this story. Um, I just it, it, it's it's the final part of the chapter that I wanted to make sure everything was all good to go, uh, like good to go. I mean, like kind of round that whole story out and all that uh, crazy stuff. But yeah, good on them. And uh, May has disappeared for good. Bye. Bye, Rip May. Never forget. So now the podcast can actually. Start. Now the podcast can actually begin. I'm just love kidding. you, May. <laughs> love you, May. Hey, I could just easily. I think that I think this podcast has had the most step in and outs of frame that we've ever had, and I like it. It's it, it keeps us on our toes. It keeps not, us. Not like it feels more normal. It feels like a normal conversation. I, yeah, I, I think I, I think I like that more honestly. I know this is not part of the topic. Oh, yeah. Kari says Rip May never forget. Robit says Rob shall take May's spot. Oh boy. I know, like when Funhouse does their stuff, like they mm. just just sit there, but. The only one who gets on and off the the the, the set is Benson. I'm saying Benson. Robot, that means you have to actually be here. Robot has to actually be here and talk. I thought Rob wanted to come here and visit you or something and hang out with. Hello, me. I am May now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said he wanted to come over here and kick our asses. Oh, yeah, 
He wanted to come here and kick no. our asses. Well, he sort of is like me. He always says girl can do that boy. Right? That's very true. Yeah, he's already he's already started. What would be next the... podcast special guest for a bit? Nice. Apparently, he was playing Ultimate Chicken Horse yesterday out on stream and was actually talking. And I'm like, fuck. I missed you. I know. He's like, why are why weren't you guys on when Robit was streaming? I'm like, because you never told us. Yeah. Hang out, kick ass. Same difference, yeah? Hell Basically. Yeah. Basically. Very true. Very true. So, before we move on to the next topic, I do want to ask, what is the quintessential May on the podcast starter kit? All Might. <laughs> May wearing some sort of All Might merch? Robit says, I am literally Jesus. Yeah. Uh, are you grabbing an All Might thing? Oh, uh, she's grabbing uh, her... Uh, special ones. She's grabbing her Funkos. Oh, well, you man. didn't have to ruin it, babe. Let's there. See. there we go. There's the All Might stuff. There. Just hold on to it. Right there. It's pretty great because this Funko actually has an unpainted we'll arm. We'll just have to put them closer there. to the camera. And let's say this Funko has an unpainted arm. You oh, can't really yeah. see it, but it's got an unpainted arm. It's pretty great. So All Might. He just has an arm sleeve. You don't know. Oh, uh, well, he is here. <laughs> he is here. Oh, Thanos got him. Ooh. Damn. I don't feel so good. Oh. Ooh. Oh my, I don't feel so good. Robit said I'll be over in a couple days. It's pretty great. We'll be at work. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so starter kit for the me. May, May on the podcast starter kit. Um, Fugo. Fugo. <laughs> Husbando. Husbando. Look tired or bored. <laughs> I, if you watch, I look yeah, tired and bored at the beginning of you. every podcast. I can't help it. I just get tired. Snacks. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Kari says, I still need to watch season three of uh, My Hair Academia. So I get, still need to. I've only watched through season two. I just need to get caught up. Me too. Yeah. I'm like two, three episodes behind. Hey, the, the big three showed up recently. Oh, yeah. And oh, Overhaul Mario, showed up recently. Mario, Tomiki, and Nedry. Mirio, I didn't realize was that jacked. I love Mirio, man. He has Pac-Man eyes. He he does. <laughs> he literally just like no, no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. I and then Mirio's I like it, Mirio's like an anxious like emo boy. No, it's Tomaki. That's Tomaki, bro. Not no, Mirio. I'm sorry. I confused the names. Yeah, it's Tomaki. Tomaki is the. I'll bring my copy of our HPS since you're a fucking heathen. I am. I am a heathen. How fucking dare I? And May, May, May same here with the tiredness. Ugh. Rip. Never forgets. But yeah, I, I feel like. Glad Cardi's been playing Persona 5. Oh yeah, Persona Cardi's been playing Persona 5. I'm happy now. She Makes is, me happy. She's now really. Well, she's just, know, she's always been a cool kid, but now it's right super now she's cool. She's a mega cool fan of Super. Kid. Now she, she was a cool kid, but now she's a fan of Thief. She always been a fan of Thief, bro. But she's super fan of the. Oh yeah, it's official now. She is. A little she was on the fan site. Now she's a part of the yeah. Phantom Thieves. There you go. You will be able to sing that whole soundtrack from memory. Oh boy. Or else. Oh, well, I call it a threat. I call it a threat. What's the next topic we got? <laughs> What's the next topic we got over there? No, so we're just uh, we're gonna be wrapping up the normal stuff before we get into Detroit Become Human spoilers. Because we've all beaten the game, actually. Which, um, which Kari, if you don't want to spoil Yeah, Kari, you're going to have to dip at some point. Uh, I played put it a, already on my boyfriend's account, but now I'm doing, doing it on mine. Nice! So now you're a double cool kid for playing it twice. I always forget Kari has a boyfriend. Oh. Because yeah. she doesn't talk about it that often. Right. So I forget she actually has a boyfriend. Well, That's that, good, though. Well, then it's like... We're starting to talk to people less and less that we talk to all the time. Well, I figured Kari just unfortunately is one because she's always she's so busy. busy. Yeah, it makes sense. It's because we're all busy. So how much you can do about yeah. it? Adulting sucks. Kari has a boyfriend. <laughs> 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 That's, That's awesome. Yes. I love the uh, the come around the come around of wait. <laughs> she's got a boyfriend. That was me too when I first now. heard. I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise, <laughs> Romy. <laughs> So is that gonna be you guys if I randomly get a boyfriend one day and don't say? No one ever around? talks to Ruby. <laughs> is, is that? Are you guys gonna be like that? If You're I gonna be like, like, hey, by the way, I got a boyfriend. Be like, what? Hey, gonna, gonna That's gonna be the main podcast theme. So May's got a fucking boyfriend. Let's celebrate it. Surprise! Like, it's an All Might cosplayer. Yeah. <laughs> How much you want to bet that's gonna happen? Well, I mean, All Might is bad, super man. ripped. No one ever talks to Robit. Feels bad, man. Well, I mean, the stipulation for you was it has to be a super hot bar, dude. Oh, yeah. 
Kari says, I'll be super happy for you, May. Hell yeah. No, and she won't say what. She'll be like, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, it's about fucking time. No, I'm kidding. Wow. I'm fucking kidding, babe. But anyway, speaking... Until till that day comes. Until that day comes. We'll, we'll be hot on the presses. We'll give the hot breaking news. Um, but yeah, so before we do our um, uh, Detroit Become Human spoiler discussion, we got a... Uh, well, Technically, two videos come out, but one was more of a, this is why we're not doing a video, uh, and the other one was just a big old <laughs> shit fest. We go, took you long enough, May. Holy wow. shit. I'm not Damn. offended. Damn. May's like, yeah, you're right. No, um, yeah, we had a couple videos come out. We had the, um, uh, uh <laughs> God, I'm trying to remember. You're, you're messaging, and I don't know what's going on. No, we had a couple videos come out. So we had a video called Rough Week. Where I kind of broke down. I mean, that was last week was a shitty fucking week. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact is, like, it zapped all my creativity and kind of, I guess, ties into the whole burnout thing because it was just like nothing was shaping up, and I'm like, I'm not ready to put anything out. And instead of instead of doing the hey, no episode, and I'm just like, well, where did that come from? I'm just kind of really introspective. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have anything you wanted to say about that video before we get into the actual like good video. But um, uh, it'll probably be a while before I play that, so I'll be probably forget about the spoilers. <laughs> Kept you waiting, huh? Yes. Are crackers enough to take meds just with? Just as long yeah. as you have food. Just you just gotta eat something. Yeah. But yeah, so the rough week video was just kind of like the origin of the when we would not upload a video and stuff like that. So I'll start with you, babe, mm-hmm. while May goes Walks to grab again. something. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with it. May went to go grab something. But, um, uh... Like, like, what did you think about like that whole idea? You know? I think it was just something everybody needs to hear. Cause yeah, you get burnt out with anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a hobby. It could be something like work. It could just be yeah. like something you're interested in. You eventually get burnt. Yeah, out and you just need to take Andy? a break. Oh, I'm good, thank you. Andy, no, I'm good. Andy. May's getting another snack. Damn. I mean, he's not wrong. But no, it's like, I had you watch the video while May and I went and worked out, because I was just like, do we even need to post this video? Should we just scrap it? Um, Kari's like, I know that feeling. Yeah. Um, but you were like, no, we need to not scrap it. You need to post this. I think people need to hear it, because, you know, we've all been suffering from a lot of burnout recently. I'm like, yeah. Because here's the thing about it. It's normal to feel burnout. You don't need to be ashamed that you're feeling burnout. It's okay. It happens to literally everybody. Yeah. Isn't that a game? Burnout, yeah. yeah. It's like oh. our <laughs> game, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty wild game, and in fact, uh, Stryker from K Rock was one of the DJs in, or he was the DJ in Burnout Three. And K Rock is, you know, the world famous K Rock. It's a rock radio station out here in LA. Um, which, if babe, if you ever heard any of the recent interviews with Mike Shinoda, it was on K Rock. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, K Rock they have their weenie roast, which. He played there. Also, Panic at the Disco and Weezer have played there. A bunch of fucking bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But um, Robot says, "Where's my candy, man?" <laughs> come over and I'll give you some. Yeah, come on over, dude. Come kick our asses you on have to actually stream. Come over here, yeah, though. come kick our asses on stream. Uh, but no, May. I, did you ever get to see that full video? I'll be honest, I never watched it. Yeah. I never watched it, but I did hear about what you. Did what I was saying it. about it. Yeah. yeah and okay. I, I mean. It's a matter of, you know, yeah. there's, like she said, there's nothing wrong with burnout. Mm-hmm. I mean, I fucking will. if you, yeah. if you, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting that out. I mean, I see, I've seen other YouTubes before um, talk about, you know, burnout. I mean, Mark Flash done it. I've seen yeah. some videos. There's nothing wrong in admitting it, you know, I mean. Yeah. If you're burnout, you're burnout. I mean, if you want to put an update video, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just a mm-hmm. matter of, do you feel comfortable putting it out? Because yeah. I know while you were struggling with that. Well, remind me, what was the reason why you were struggling with putting it up there? I just, I didn't know if I was just wasting my time. Uh, it was already a shit week on my mentality, personal life, work shit. And I was just like, I wasn't happy with anything that was coming out. But I didn't want to just not upload anything. But I was at a point of like, I did the video twice. Yeah. And I was just like, I had to have a mirror listen to it. I'm like, I think this is a waste of time. I shouldn't even post this. Yeah. You know playing into my mentality on it anyway and she should have said no people need to hear it when I can yeah <laughs> when I can Robo says when I can it's pretty great but it's never he yeah. doesn't want to help with doesn't like us I got a doctor's appointment coming up and Greyhound costs money damn aka I really don't want to visit you guys so I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna say I have to 
Robert. send me your address and I will drive up and get you. Robit, stop buying records then. Ooh! Well, he can't remember the one he wanted to sold out. One of them. Yeah. Oh, in the record store that was supposed to go out of business is no longer going out of business. Wait, what? <laughs> they probably single-handedly stayed Made in business of Robit. because Robit keeps buying records, which honestly, the gift of Shots music. Fired. The gift of music is honestly a great gift, and I'm kind of the bad influence going, keep buying more records because I just love music. Okay, stop buying records. Yeah. Mm. Damn, right? That's like I used to spend so much money on like CDs and iTunes gift cards. That's like dude. telling May to stop buying Quartz and Fico. Yeah, right? <laughs> or tell her to stop buying. Yeah. They sold the business itself as opposed to just the inventory. I can't stop. (laughs) I mean, the power of music. You can't or you won't? (laughs) Can't stop, won't stop. It's a big difference. Yeah. But, anyhow. So then it led into this week's video. Mm -hmm. Talking about being proud of a fucking video. (laughs) Let's talk about... Let's talk about... Oh, hey, let's give a round of applause. Yay. I have a problem. I have a problem. <laughs> so let's talk about Argument Deconstructed. The video about Inko Midoriya, how she's apparently not supportive. So this video has some history. Babe, we've been talking for months about a series going into dumb arguments on the internet. Mm-hmm. And I remember it came to a head when we had a bunch of the Voltron shit going on. And then you sent me that thread on Mother's Day. And I was just like... Holy shit! This we, have a new person in here. we 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 need to. Um, Where are you from? Uh, we need to straight up like talk about this. By the way, uh, big shout out to uh, I'm gonna fuck this name I up. I Laden. I Laden. I Who says hello? Where Where are you from? Hello, welcome to the podcast. We We're are from. from we are from the planet Earth. No, I will go in general terms. We are from Southern California. Uh, also, Greg, just uh, just go to Nas China Lake and you'll find me. All right, let's go. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, I'll hear about some idiot trying to get on base, and I'll know it's you, and I'll come to you. Oh man! Oh, oh anyway. shit! There we go. But yeah, so um, so she sent me that thread back on Mother's Day. Oh, there's somebody else. And um. It's pretty great. So HR, I guess I'm going into the explanation now that we got new people rolling on in. So HR is our channel Hardest Reset. It's the Hardest Reset office. It's human resources. Yes. Our residential role is like, what the fuck else could it be? It's human resources. It's not wrong. Yeah. Hello, HR. No, we realized our channel name Hardest Reset had the initials HR. So we're kind of playing off of that for our podcast, the HR office. And yeah, we're just a bunch of nobodies in Southern California. Hello, HR. <laughs> it's spool. Oh, they're doing it again. again. Yeah. Um, Take this copy down to the office down at the end of the hall. This copy is yours to keep. Uh, this copy stays with me. Oh boy. What? HR. Yeah, it's doing Whatever you do, like uh, paperwork in and hard work. Yes. They'll keep a copy. They'll have you keep really? one. They have. One, I've like, been written. Five. My last job didn't have me do that. I've been written up at work before, so I know how those copies uh, work. <laughs> Rob is their PR. Yep, Rob is, in fact, their PR. But yes, so, um, anyway, so the Argument Deconstructed video, you sent me that thread, and I was just like, what the ever-living fuck? Like, people were, like, this person was straight up saying that, oh yeah, Inko Midori is not supportive. I'm like, we gotta fucking talk about this shit. So we've been wanting to do this for a while. We originally had a video, it was a very different format. Where we were kind of doing more of a commentary style on it. We finished it up. We had audio issues with it. And I also just kind of wasn't happy with it. And I wanted to retool it. So I came up with the idea of, well, why don't we do a dramatic reading of it? <laughs> so last week we recorded your audio and my audio. Which I got to say, your delivery is probably one of my favorite fucking things that you've done for the channel. Kari um, says, I, I've had that uh, one at my current job was because of my hair. And who dare says that about Mama Midoriya? Yo, I mean, Argument Deconstructed breaks it down. May voices a problematic internet user who says that she is not supportive. Not and even a problematic fave, just a problematic. Just a problematic person on the internet, dude. I mean, Robot's problematic fave. I mean, <laughs> so am I, though. I'm a fucking asshole. People should not hold me up on a pedestal, let's be real. But, um, oh, yeah, right. But, um, yeah, it's one of those things where, um, yeah, there's this whole argument and just, I'm like, what if we just did it as, um, 
like a dramatic reading. And then when I did your audio, I I I hate the fact that the only thing that sucks was your audio was spiked. Because I didn't set it correctly, but it's man, it's I'm still thankful for how that video came out because I would say you're my favorite part of that fucking video. Your delivery on that person is <laughs> so... It took a bit, but I got it. Yeah, it's like it took you a little bit to finally get it. I'm like, give me an internet voice. And we did a couple runs of like different voices and we finally got it down. I'm like, just be as obnoxious as possible. And you are arguably... Are you calling favorite. me an asshole because you're right? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite was my Valley Girl uh, voice, oh, yeah. which is like a... You know, I'll just have to watch it later. I didn't get to have a... Uh, boo, 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 boo. I didn't get to ha- a chance to yet uh, rip me. Yeah, he I just... like, totally... Did you see that boy? He, like, totally was crushing on me and, like... My hair shame on him. Good. I like I, girls. My hair looks so <laughs> good. Like, like... Shame on him. Hey, I mean, I don't know. Shame on him. I only fuck with tea girls. Oh my what? god. That's what... the Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, it's, do you know what T girl is? T girl is? The okay. trans girl. Oh, you talked to her. Yes. Yeah. That crazy guy. Oh, oh my, god. my yeah. god. Becky, look at her butt. butt. You guys play WoW? No, we no. did none of I us did play WoW. I played it for a week back in middle school and I never. I did once when the again. Panda expansion came Oh, yeah, that's right. The fucking Miss the Panda. Played five minutes of it. I did. <laughs> we play 14. We play Final Fantasy 14, though. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so we did the whole... I know we keep getting distracted on this. So we, we did the, the whole video. We recorded the audio. I kind of put the visuals together. I added a bunch of music to it. And then that whole meme came out. I'm going to start with you, Mira. What was your favorite part of that fucking video? Uh, just honestly hearing Maze stuff. <laughs> Maze the best part of that video. Thank you. You guys, you can keep... <laughs> yes, we're gonna inflate. You're saying my ankle, guys. I want to inflate it to a point that you're looking down on us. Okay, by the end of this sure it does. You do. I mean, <laughs> even more. Like you go from queen to goddess at this point, which is pretty wild. But um, it's one of those things where, <laughs> yeah, May's delivery on that fucking video, was so good, so wild. But um, May. Yes. What was your favorite part of the video? Oh, um, the. The misspelling of the words and you zoomed in on it. Oh yeah, God! I remember when we were doing the the voiceover. I re- I remember we were doing the uh, the voiceover for it. Amazing, you go <laughs> like, <laughs> inflating exponentially now. Yeah, you're right. But I remember when you were looking at it. You're like, man, I just want to correct it. I'm like, no, read the misspellings, and it was fucking with your head because you want to correct it, but you don't. Um, I had some issues because I I suck at reading. If I were ever to release like raw audio of me recording. For like a, a, a three minute bit, it's like twenty minutes. Because I can't read paper to save my fucking life. And I wanna Wait, be a you can't read paper? You mean you can't read words? Well I'm saying it's like that's what they call it, you know, paper. You know, when you've got words on a paper, it's like, you know, you have a paper copy. It's like you need to read the paper. It's like I can't read paper to save my fucking life. I can see her head get larger. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's it's fucking wild. But yeah, it's it's one of those things where I, I wanna correct things and you wanna correct things. But it's like, you're like, no, we're going to read the fucking... It makes it adds to the humor, I believe, I think, when you uh, don't correct it. Yes. You just go with it. That's why sometimes in the video I would say, like, and, you know, I would read the line and i go, period. Like, yes. Or, the, or question mark. Period, question mark. mark. You know, it's just, it, I, to me, I felt it would be funnier if you do that because it's like you're just reading directly how it goes. It is, though. Robit straight up says you can't read in general. <laughs> I'm like, ooh. Shrug emoji. <clears throat> Whoops. Anyway. But yeah, so I already blew my load on what my favorite part was, which is inflating Maze Ego. But uh, yeah, I love that. And then I also loved um, your the opening dialogue that we wrote for the narration that you did. Dun dun. Oh man, that was so motherfucking good it was it was you were like can you do this like law and order narration yeah i'm like i'm like your motivation is basically um it's basically one of those it's things it's like a law and order episode mm-hmm. yes absolutely but yeah it's one of those things where um i was like your motivation is you're reading the narration of uh this is how this thing happened 
these are their stories. Bum bum. <laughs> yeah, basically, it was really, really fucking funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, it was perfect. It was, it was I, okay. I know that there were things that you could change. But yeah, it was a great video. I fucking loved the video so much that um, it was pretty great. And I loved the way that it came out. And I was so thankful for the way that it came out. Thank you for care of that. But it was it was it was really fucking funny. Um, Maybe Zico can get larger. Keep going. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But we all know that the video wouldn't have happened if May wasn't the one that voice acted that character. No, it, it took me a little bit though. I will admit. I mean, I it's part of a big reason. I struggled with yeah. it at first because I remember you were with me, and I, you know, I was getting frustrated partly because I was tired. Yeah, I yeah. Just, I'm still at a point of, I'm still trying to learn a. a to not be so hard on myself when I don't right. get a line down the first time because no, I know that's I gonna you. happen. Yeah. That's the thing. It just I naturally I get frustrated at myself because I don't do no one no right. one no but one's realize, first take. Yeah. But the thing is, like, like I said, it's just a matter of I can't be so hard on myself. Right. I have to let myself breathe. I have to take a moment. If Absolutely. I don't get it right the first time, that's okay. Oh yeah. And I'm slowly trying to get that down. Oh, yeah. So you know, I mean, I'll admit sometimes in the video when I listened to it when you played it for me, there were times like. I did lose the accent a little bit because I'm not used to doing it. Like, I was listening, and I'm like, okay, you know, it was a little rough. But, you know, I still did the best I could, and I thought it came out pretty damn well. It was our first time ever doing any, like, prolonged voice acting yeah. in that kind of video. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, also just a thing of you got to practice once you get an accent to just hold it as long as yeah. you can. Yeah, I mean, that's the most difficult hard. thing to do. I know I've seen, like, uh, you know, when voices are at panels, and they say, can you do this voice? And I've, I've seen some voice actors, like, they'll start talking to themselves a little bit in that voice to try to yeah. get that way because they have to remember what voice they use for the character. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I know certain characters, you know, they have that one voice and it's hard to remember, like, what you did. Oh, yeah. For it. Oh, that's depressing. Roma says, I'm out of crackers, and now I'm sad. It is depressing. Rip. But, but yeah, so I like that in that video. And ah, that video was so I, much fun I hope we do more stuff like that. I really cannot wait to do more Argument Deconstructed. I have actually spent... I'm going to drop the, 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 the knowledge around here uh, when we finally get a release date for Voltron the week before Voltron comes out. Because we already have a, a, a... We already have a... I already have a video plan. I don't... I, I, even I haven't watched... I, I still watch haven't watched seven. Season 7. I and I said recently... I haven't even watched. seen six. Six or Swords seven. and sacks. <laughs> I haven't even seen season six or seven. I don't know. Just my yeah. motivation still hasn't gone up for it to watch. I'm just so like not. Motivated. For me, my thing is that I just I've been so busy. Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> Greg, when you come out, when you come to China Lake, bring crackers. I'll bring the crackers. Don't worry about it, dude. But no, it was one of those things where um, I have a another argument deconstructed that's going to be related to the clans arguments oh, God. that we are going I'm to ready. have. I'm ready. For I'm that. ready to fucking meme on this. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, I saw a lot of shit like when the season seven promos are coming out, and Adam was a character that was announced, and everyone was yelling about "Ha, ah, Sheath canceled," and I'm like, "Oh man!" Like that made me really go, "Okay, we really have to do a video about this garbage fire of a fandom." Basically, um, there's, I mean, no one's gonna argue it. They basically are a dumpster fire yeah. of a fandom. It, they're horrible. It's mm-hmm. insane. If nothing but, else, at least the majority of the fandom. Yeah, it's... Um, we don't want to lump everybody together. No, yeah. yeah, I know that. But still, it's just these wackos are mm-hmm. just insane. It's the vocal majority. Yeah. Well, I would argue they're probably a vocal minority. No, yeah, they're a majority. <laughs> yeah, don't go to any Voltron gathering. That's why at AX, we're like, yeah, we got a Voltron gathering. I'm like, let's not go to the Voltron gathering. I was like, I'm cool with whatever. I felt awkward when we went to the one you and I went to at WonderCon... I just, after I a while, felt uncomfortable. I, just, I was fine doing some shit photos, but after a while, I got so tired of going back up there. Yeah. Because I was trying to do every single freaking ship on there, and I'm like, I like Voltron. I'm okay with certain ships, but I'm not going to go up there for every single ship that keeps yeah. with in this, this show. It is way I stopped going good. up there at the halfway through the Shiro yeah, ones. I was, I was like, like, I can't do it. This is too much. That's yeah. how it was for Dramatical Murder. Yeah. Damn. Every little ship that you could think of. So I just, after a while, I was just like, okay, we're just staying there taking pictures. But after a while, I was just like, I just want to go now. Yeah, and we did, and we ditched actually. Yeah, we ditched. Yeah. So after a while, we just left because we're like, mm-hmm. we're done. This oh, is yeah. too much. I totally, yeah, I don't blame you. But yeah, it was. Um, we're gonna have more of those videos coming up soon. Cool. One of them's gonna be about Voltron. I'm excited. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm. <laughs> we'll just have to cosplay Detroit and go to the gathering for Detroit. Ha! <laughs> well, we will be the gathering. Because Android, we will lives, be the gathering. Android lives matter. <laughs> oh man! So hashtag all androids. Hashtag hashtag hashtag, mm, hashtag not all androids. Mm, excuse me, not all androids. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm going to do the wrap-up of the normal podcast now because we're about to go into some massive spoiler for Detroit Become Human. Uh, so for those who do not want spoilers for Detroit Become Human, we're going to end the podcast for you guys here. So thank you guys so much for those who do not want the spoilers. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If, you wanna, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want more content, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you're on Twitch, go ahead and follow us on Twitch. And we go live every other Saturday and uh, or Sunday, excuse me. Go live every other Sunday and uh, all that fun stuff. We also have YouTube, youtube.com slash Hardest Reset. That's where we upload all of our videos. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you guys so much. Let us know what you think. That being said, we are ending off that part of the podcast. The rest of this podcast is spoilers for Detroit Become Human. Uh, we had a little bit of a spoiler discussion last podcast. I was a, dec- I think a little over halfway through the game. I beat the game that night. Bunch of shit happened. I got a really fucked up ending. Mira ended up sitting down, marathoning through the game, and got the same game that May did. So let's talk Detroit. First of all, let's just do a general roundabout. And the gangster wants to know what this is. So this is a podcast. A podcast <laughs> where people sit around microphones oh and talk God, about dumb great. shit for her. A couple hours. No, this is a... Uh, Rose says the last part of the game the is... The best part of the game is Dirty Bomb. Oh, he had the Dirty Bomb! Mm. Yeah, that was... You could definitely do the Dirty Bomb. So remember when, at the end of the game, you're given the bomb by North? And it's like, you can on, just... On the ship. On the ship. And you're able to just detonate it if you wanted to detonate it. You can do that? Yes! Oh, I did do that. Yeah? yeah. You, can either, you can either, like, set it off or just put it in your pocket. I just put it in my pocket because... Yeah, yeah you can set it off. Oh, I didn't know that. That's, that's horrible. That's wild. And it's no. just ending for your people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, let's see. Am I ending? I'll get to my ending in a moment. So let's just do a roundabout. Starting with Mira, what did you think of Detroit Become Human as a whole? I liked it. You liked it? It, it was kind of one of those games I didn't think that I would play or that I didn't right. think I would like, but I ended up liking it. Well, especially because you watched that one video by that one YouTuber, right? Yeah, you, you watched the Mother's Basement video, you're like, yeah, I'm never going to play this game. Which now we can all watch that because we can all play it. Yeah, <laughs> and I can argue against Jeff about why he's wrong. No, I'm kidding. Robert says, I tried to settle ship peacefully, and they started charging me, so I dirty bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I mean, he's not fucking wrong, though. But yeah, like, uh, for someone who didn't play, like, Heavy Rain or anything like that, I mean, I know the ending for Heavy Rain, but I didn't play it. Well, there's multiple endings for Heavy Rain, but... Well, I mean the twist oh, for the yeah, game. The well, that's not an ending. Though. Jason was Sean all along. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> X to Jason. Press X to Jason. That's fair, Robin. Yeah, it is fair enough. But yeah, it was just—it was one of those games I didn't think I'd play. Right. I just—I tried it, and I wanted to see the other ending because May had kept talking about the other ending, and I wanted to see it. Yeah, and I royally fucked everything up in my ending. Yeah. Jason! <laughs> Jason! Sean! That's what it sounds like when you're calling for him. Jason! It's like My that. favorite is Sean! Oh, it's just yeah. like, the fuck, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, you could tell he's French in that, because he's, he's got yeah. that accent when he well, yells Sean. The voice actor is actually French. That's what I was saying. You he can is... hear his natural accent when he yells Sean. It's like the president in Detroit. Oh, oh you could tell Irish. she's Irish. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah. You guys pointed oh. it out. Yeah, yeah, I could hear it. I was like, mm, I didn't know she was Irish, but until I saw um, the completionist video of it, because he ended up playing the game like when it first came out. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, some of the voice acting is a little wonky, especially the president, <laughs> who is clearly an Irish woman." Yeah, the way she says some words, you're like, "Oh, she's absolutely Irish." Uh, Irish <laughs> Gary, yeah. Gary, ha, <laughs> Gary. Rip. But anyways, I don't get this Gary thing. Are we just doing the Jason meme, but for any name? Yeah. Probably. Gary. <laughs> but anyway, so let's go with May. Mm-hmm. So I remember you were originally on the fence with the game because you loved Heavy Rain. Oh, yeah. Fucking didn't like, I don't want to say hated. Maybe you did hate. Did you Did you hate Beyond Two Souls? No, okay. So Heavy Rain to this day is still my favorite David Cage game. Okay. I love Fair that enough. game. That game... That twist was, to me, that was, like, it blew my mind. Right. Beyond Two Souls, I don't hate it. I just felt it could have been so much better. But Makes David sense. Cage didn't know what he wanted to do halfway through. Right. He was writing the script, and I and went. I wouldn't say it was ambitious I, enough. He's like, I, I, he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's just throw whatever the frick I We got Willem Dafoe and Ellen Page in this game. Yeah, we'll do whatever. That's all I need. I don't need the story to be yeah. any good. Um, but, yeah, Detroit, I had my, hesi- I was really hesitant at first. Yeah. 
because I had just, you know, I played Beyond Souls, and that game, to me, was a, a dumpster fire after a while, yeah. as you would say. Um, so I was really hesitant, but after I played it, it just, I fell in love with that game. That game was actually really good. The writing is so good. The <laughs> plot, I mean, there's some things, you know, like, you overthink about. Like, I did that, too, with Detroit. I was thinking about it way too hard. Uh, I thought the story was really good, the, you know, the plot itself. Yeah. The characters, I love the characters. I love the acting. I love the music. Just the scenery. Just I love that every character had their own unique composer doing their yes. soundtrack. That was a really cool yes. choice. I will admit, there are some parts of the game in Beyond in Detroit was kind of slow, particularly the, the Jericho, Jericho thing. Like finding the Jericho, Jericho. Finding yeah. Jericho. I did not like that part. I, think, I like, yeah. there were some, that, and there were some parts when Marcus is talking to Jericho, like the people in Jericho, I wanted to sleep. <laughs> I was like, which is sad because Marcus is such a good character, yeah, but they is, put him I in just, some boring situation. Like, yeah, they like Jericho was just so underwhelming. Yeah, like I remember I played. I thought that Jericho was gonna be this amazing thing. I thought it was gonna be some all-knowing person that was gonna help you, and mm-hmm. then it turns out it's just it's a ship and with androids. And I'm like, I'm Connor, the android sent by Cyberlife. Yeah. Life. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I just. You know that some parts of the Jericho just really bored me. And yeah. It's a shame because Marcus in general, I thought was a great character. I thought his story was good. There were just some parts that were really boring. Right. You know? Yeah. And then just the whole thing with Connor. That I I love Connor. Like Connor. Is <laughs> Connor's my, your all time favorite. Connor yeah. is my all time favorite character. Like even in the survey I did, yeah. I picked Connor was my favorite character. Yeah. I think I. I think she ended up doing my like, survey. Yeah, because oh, yeah. it did it while you were gone, and I was just like, do I answer for me or do I answer for you? I wish you. I finished yeah. playing when it brought that survey up. Eh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything. They yeah. I know. But yeah, so I, I thought the uh, Detroit was really good. Like, I, I feel like Connor's after, best waifu. He is best waifu. He is. <laughs> I feel like David Cage after Beyond Two Souls. I don't know. I just you can tell like he, he took his time he took with this his time. Game, I yeah. think he probably, like, I think he saw some of the things people were complaining about with um, Beyond Two Souls, and he's like, okay, I'm going to refine Detroit. Yeah. Right. I'm going to make it even better. I'm going to do my best. It's, you know, and yeah. just, I just, I've talked about time and time again, there's just, I have so many problems with Beyond Two Souls, it's just, I just don't like it. It's you didn't just, like it, you didn't like Ellen Page? I didn't, game. like, Ellen Page, don't get me wrong, Ellen Page is not really a bad actress, I've seen... She's a, not a bad actress at I've all, I've seen her yeah. in some other things, it's just that role they put her in for Beyond Two Souls right. did not fit her. Yeah, like, I totally get you. I just feel like... David Cage wanted someone famous, so he just grabbed Ellen Page and said, hey, be in my game. And she said, okay. Because here's the thing, like like I said before, William Defoe was the best character in that And he was the villain, right? Yes, yeah. he was the villain. I felt bad, more bad for him, the villain, than I did, did for Ellen Page, the main character you're playing as, and you stick with the entire story. I felt more for William Defoe. And like I said... Both of them that are, would be like are if, good reactors in their own right. That would be like if you were playing Detroit and you had Connor, but you felt more sympathy for Kamsky. Exactly. Which, fuck Kamsky! <laughs> Kamsky can go suck a dick. Still, David Cage, I'm sending a cease and desist to you. You stole my like... No. It's it's hard looking at yourself in the mirror now, isn't it? I, just, I fucking like I hated Kamsky. When, when I first watched... When I first played it, I Willem Dafoe scene. wanted to be Willem Defriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the funny part. So in in Beyond Two Souls, William Dafoe's character initially comes off. He's a good guy. Like he right. helps you. He is one of your closest allies. And then later on in the game, he just becomes this bad guy and goes against you. But regardless, that's neither here nor there. I just didn't like Detroit or Beyond Two Souls. Well, yeah, I didn't like Detroit. I was like, whoa, like, it is. damn. I didn't like Beyond Two Souls, but I felt after playing Detroit, it really did redeem. David nice. Cage for me because after I played Beyond Two Souls, I was really hesitant with anything David Cage was. Yeah. I was like, when that trailer for Beyond or Detroit came out, I think at E3 last year or what? Was it year? was last was it the car year. Thing? No, no there was, was no. There was an actual trailer. It had to be last year because they were showing off. It was the stuff was, with Connor. There was an actual trailer, and I saw it, and I went, "Oh, this it first looked good." Then I saw David Cage, and I'm like, "Oh." I'm You're like, never mind. I was yeah. like, I am not excited for Skate. I'm sitting yeah. in my pre. Oh, I was like, oh. no longer pre-ordering. Yeah, because yeah. I made that mistake with Beyond Two Souls. Because when I watched yeah. the trailer for that, that was amazing. But then I was like, but yeah, I've actually never seen the whole car uh, tech demo. I just know about. I remember it. seeing it's it. It's run in the game. Yeah, yeah. I need oh, to yeah. unlock it. Yeah, and I then you can also either. go on YouTube and watch it for free. Too. I, I mean, that's true. But yeah, I just I loved. Uh, Detroit. It was really good. It was so really what? What? Like, what we? What we've heard is May hates Detroit. She loved Beyond Two Souls. Like Detroit? Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> no, she hates the I city hate, of Detroit. I hate Detroit. Yeah. 
She doesn't no. want to. She doesn't yeah, want to cosplay Connor at all. Oh. Nah, I hate Connor. I, Connor's gross. <laughs> Connor's nasty. Even though you want him inside you, but yeah, anyway. That's <laughs> no, so um. Talk about your dirty bomb. Damn, that's a dirty dick. <laughs> anyway, hey, don't do dirty Dan like that. Damn, I'm dirty Dan. <laughs> Who you call Pinhead? <laughs> anyway, so who are uh, let's go around. We already know Maze, so go ahead and just reiterate it. Who is your favorite character? Connor. Who is your favorite character? Kara. Kara. Um. Kara. Right? No, Hank. Oh, that's right. You like Hank's Hank. the best. You like Hank. Hank. No, I have a dirty day. Yeah. Yeah. The funny part is, like I said before, when I was playing, as soon as I saw Hank, I was like. We'll get to that. Greg is gonna like this character. I was like, this yeah. is Greg. This is gonna probably be Greg's favorite character in this game when I played it. And I was like, yeah. And then when you told me just now, like, yeah, Hank, Hank is your favorite. Yeah. I was like, okay, I knew it. I knew I Hank, Hank is gonna be his favorite. You character. look like Kamsky, but you act like Hank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Robot's asking how many people did I end up killing? We'll get to that. We'll 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 get to my ending because you guys got the best ending and I got a pretty shitty ending. We'll just have a body count on the. Driver's yeah. Driver's. Um. Oh, dude, you're gonna lose fucking. Mr. Count. Krabs is a great character. Yeah, he really is though. The fact that Hank is voiced by Mr. Krabs' voice actor blows my fucking no, mind. No, the best character was the fish that you pick up at the beginning of the game. Oh yeah. Which, save the fish. which that fish apparently had a name, but I don't remember what the name of it yeah, was. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, Brian said there was a name, but I don't remember the name of the fish. I remember I picked it up and it said, uh, you're analyzing the fish or something and you learn its name. And I'm yeah. like, "Oh, that's cute. Sumo, Sumo best is character. best character. And Sumo is great. I'm here to save you. My favorite scene in that game is when he breaks into Hank's house. Oh, yeah, and to Sumo re- comes up to you. And uh, Sumo, I know your name. I'm here to save you. I love, because I didn't get his name at the office before, but, like, she did. That's what I did, too. Yeah. So she ju- he jumps in, uh, and, like, in my opinion, he goes, Easy, I'm a friend of his. I'm trying to save him. And then you're like, Sumo, I know your name. I'm trying to save Hank. What happened when you, in your playthrough, did, did Sumo just walk off? He just, he just, he just basically was like, Oh, dog, I'm, I'm here to help your owner. And then what did Sumo do? He just, just walks off. Oh, okay, yeah. he walks off. Okay. He, he, it's the same yeah. thing, it's just different dialogue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, now, we wanted to talk about a body count, and we'll talk about our ending, so let's just get to the meat of it. So let's talk about your guys' ending, and my ending. So, let's... Everyone lived! <laughs> <laughs> Miranda and I got the same exact ending. You guys got the That's same That's what he was saying, your ending. Yeah, so. uh, we got the exact same ending. I wanted that ending. I didn't originally know what ending Miranda was gonna get. I, I just wanted to be as pacifist yeah, as I Yeah, so could. you want passive, which ended you getting the best ending. Yeah. Me, because I didn't want anything bad to happen to Connor. <laughs> I wanted everyone to live, because yeah. I wanted the best ending to see what happened. I got the best ending, everyone lived. Connor was your top priority, Kara was mine. Yeah, I was like, I had to keep Connor up. Yes. And then you... Don't fucking look at me like this, babe. You... Don't look at me like this, boo. Purposely had someone die. Listen... Here. And then inadvertently killed Listen someone else. Here. Yeah, I so I made it I made a decision early on. <laughs> I'm gonna get into <laughs> Greg let Greg the bodies Marcus. hit the floor. That's okay. You were gonna get into Marcus's I went into thing. Marcus's train of thought. The fact that he was basically left for dead by for Dead is a game. It's got a sequel. It's got a sequel. Down a third one, though. Valve doesn't know how to count a three. three. But, um, Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> yeah, right? So basically, um, they... I, I got into the mind of what would Marcus actually do? And I decided to go the violent route. So what happened in my ending? So their endings are the revolution was a success, everything was peaceful, everyone who because was Marcus important lived. lived and survived. Ruby said I can only count to four. So, in my playthrough, I went the violent route. When we talked on the podcast about Connor dying, Connor came back because it blew my fucking mind. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. in the end of the game, Dirty Bomb! <laughs> Jericho fell. I threw a couple quick time events. Marcus got killed in the raid in Jericho. Mark, or yeah, Mar- or Marcus was killed. Connor, Connor took, over. took over the situ- the f- for the revolution. Mm-hmm. North ran it on the revolutionary front. The revolution failed. She died. She and everyone a part of the revolution died. Jericho fell. Um, Kara and everybody 
did make it over the border to Canada. But we had to sacrifice Jerry. But we had to sacrifice Jerry. And Connor, in order to escape Amanda, had to commit suicide. <laughs> so the only Kari. Yikes. Yikes. The only one that lived in your playthrough. Was Kara's Kara. the only one who lived in my playthrough. Kara and Alice. Mm-hmm. Carl, Alice, and everybody. Carl, Alice, and Luther. Rip J. Yeah. It, uh, so I, M- Mira, Rip Jerry, M- Rip Connor. Mira freaked the fuck out because I was playing, mm-hmm. and I used a guide at the end because if I didn't want anything bad to happen to Kara, Alice, and Luther. Mm-hmm. I didn't read the part where if you're in bad standing, if you don't sacrifice Jerry, they murder you on the spot. Yeah, because you, you're an android. So yeah. she goes, please, and the whole thing happens, and she's freaking out, crying, and I pause them all. Because it says, "Is it too late?" She said, "Please, we just want to live." And his standing with the public was hostile. Hostile. Wow. So yeah, so they gunned him down. Yep. So then they, I paused. I was able to go back, and it started at the beginning of that scene again. I'm like, I'm doing this again. I can't let anything bad happen you to Kara. Didn't work I, for until dawn. I, I did. I, I thought you let that scene happen, and then like realize what happened and you went back you're like no, did that was, auto save yeah well I was freaking out because I had read this I had read the guide to a certain point but I didn't read the next paragraph which was if you are hostile you need to sacrifice Jerry cause I fucking started bawling I was okay. just like oh my god Kara no so yeah like so, so that's what happened on mine it was vastly different from your guys's um so what have we learned I'm what? Just I don't know. What's your question, then? So, I'm just curious, because I think I've done this for Persona as well. So, what makes your favorite character your favorite character? I'm curious. Curry. Why do you guys, like... Okay, for example, yeah, you go, Greg, first. Why, why is Marcus your favorite character? Or, no. <laughs> why, why is Hank your favorite character? Because he's an alcoholic, and so am I. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. No, I just... I mean, mo- less with Hank in the sense of... I haven't had a child and lost a child or anything like that. But just a lot of his quirks I really loved. Because Sumo um, is a good boy. Because Sumo is a good boy. That because is awesome. Hank likes heavy metal, right? Hank likes heavy metal. He drinks. Hockey. Him. He loves hockey. He basically is going to be me when I'm older. I'm going to drink <laughs> alcohol, still listen to heavy metal, and watch hockey. Like, are that's... You, is your best friend going to be an android? Uh, are you going to be an android? I could be. Are you going to be the android <laughs> sent by Cyberlife? I could be the android sent by Cyberlife. Oh. I, I do love Hank Hill. I do, I do love Hank Hill. <laughs> but, God damn it. So, but it's just, I, I loved him, and there was enough, like, this quirk and the way he kind of, like, he handled things I kind of identified with, in a sense. So I'm just like, okay, no, that makes sense. So I kind of, that's how I fell in love with him. Like, Connor is like a puppy dog. It was pretty great. <laughs> My favorite thing was when I made Connor a little gay at the strip club. Oh, I did that I had him too. look at a guy, and he was like, Connor, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you made him look at the... Which one did you... The make? Asian guy. The Asian one. Connor. Which, which one did you have him look at? Probably the Asian guy. <laughs> See, I thought it would be funny and made him look at the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone's attractive. I wanted to see if the dialogue maybe changed a little bit, just depending on who you looked at. No, it's all the same. And, yeah. And then I just hear, Connor, the fuck are you looking at? I was like, ooh. Damn. Damn. <laughs> it's like you stole the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the so, fuck you looking at? So... Miranda. Hmm? Wyatt, uh, I asked Greg this question. So, what makes Kara your favorite character? I just relate to the whole uh, protective, kind of, almost, I guess a motherly sort of thing, because... I kind of saw that, like, when yeah. like, I noticed a lot of characters that you like, you, they tend to exhibit that trait, the whole protective mother. Oh, thing. yeah. Yeah, so... Because I, I was sitting there, like... This was me with my sister mm-hmm. whenever we were growing up, because she's ten years younger than I am, and I was always, like, the big sister. Like, don't, I can't let anything happen to her. I gotta right. take care of her. Yeah. And I was just like, I, I don't know, something about Kara, just like, I didn't want anything bad happening to her. Mm-hmm. So, that was... So, what about you? Why do you like Twink Boy Connor? <laughs> <laughs> he does look like... Gotta be a little gay. Connor is a twink. I work... I work with... At your so local 7-Eleven. <laughs> I work at your local 7-Eleven. You can be my mother. That's hot. Yeah, he's talking to me, clearly. Oh, you, I can have... be, you can be his mom, right? Mm. Ooh, that's hot. Come into my bosom, child. You're safe here now. <laughs> <laughs> Mira's like, I'm breaking up with you. I'm not doing. Hey, you gotta so go why do you like Connor so much? Why do I like <laughs> her? Because he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We that's, did it. That's, that's the end of the podcast. It's not a bad reason. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. 
but I don't have, but I don't a, have a settle, settle where I live. That I sucks. So, Rip. Kari, come out here. Greg's Greg. daddy. No! 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 Don't, don't call me that. I mean, when you're gonna meet him, I, I, I was gonna jokingly call you Daddy Kamsky. No! Robot said A poppy. A poppy. A poppy. Daddy Kimsky. <laughs> Daddy is so lame. Now you gotta call them Hokage. What? <laughs> call them Hokage. Oh. I'm actually crying. Okay. This is your fault, though. <laughs> Is my fault? No, I said it's your fault, Tell babe. Oh, okay. Anyway. So why do you like Connor? So why do you like Daddy Connor? <laughs> Papa Kamsky. <laughs> no. <sighs> so Connor, what? forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> no, it's like, Daddy, I've been bad. For the last time, it's, it's forgive me, Father, Father for, for I have sinned. sinned. Okay. So why I like Connor? Um... Because he's a twink. Yes, he's a twink. <laughs> Other than, like, you know, he excludes the whole puppy dog or thing, which is really cute. Yeah. And they want to protect it. It's just, I relate to Connor a lot, like, in the sense Because you two are an android that was sent by Cyberman. I am an android sent by Trying Cyberman. to find yes. yourself. And I'm, I'm actually deviant, yes. Yo! I uh, mean, just look at the thoughts that race through your mind. No. <laughs> um, you know, Connor, he's very devoted to his mission you know when he's he he has a mission he's so focused on it and he tries to do that one thing that's me with a lot of stuff too. right yeah. when i see something i'm when i get focused on one thing a lot of times like i want to just do this thing i want to see it through to right. the end type thing you know and i try to be very helpful like you know his whole relationship mm-hmm. with hank he's very helpful with the detective oh and, yeah you know they're great friends it's just you know, they bond over little things. Connor's very curious. He likes to learn about different things about his co-workers. You know, the detective, just to... Mm-hmm. The, what? No, just Robert oh, ro- okay. saying, like, Dad Kamsky. Ka- first Kansky, edition. Father Dad, Kansky, Father, first, first edition, edition Kamsky. That's why we started laughing. Oh, okay. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, like, and Connor, you know, he want, he's curious about the world because, you know, he's an android. He, he, um, he tries to be helpful. He wants to learn more about his co-workers. He wants to learn more about Hank. You know, he just... He, he puts himself out there for the good of, you know, people. Like, he just, he wants to be helpful. And so a lot of those traits he exhibits, I see myself in Right. No, you know, at sense. times, you know, like you said, I, he's very curious. I get that way with a lot of things, too. That's why, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll ask you certain questions on certain things. Yeah. Because I get curious because, you know, I want to learn more about it. And, you know, mm-hmm. even if I don't understand it. You yeah. know, like the whole thing where you can have Connor, you know... To, to Hank, oh, I like I like heavy metal. Yeah. yeah. That thing. I thought that was funny, and I was like, that'd be something I would do. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know much about this, but I like this type of thing. So there's just a, a lot of those traits that Connor exhibited is what yeah. I see myself in. That's one, why I like him so much. And, and you would totally throw Greg in the shower to soak. I would. Yeah, I would. she and I would. would. Like, and then I'd ask him what kind of clothes he wants to wear. I want. Please I'll, pick the hippie, hippie clothes. Hippie, hippie clothes, <laughs> please. It's Curious Connor, yes, yes. exactly. No, uh, I, I, you mentioned the music thing. And Would that make Hank the man in the yellow hat? Yes. Yeah, he's the man he's in the yellow hat. He's already a Connor out of, of scenarios. God damn it, Connor. <laughs> Connor, the fuck you looking at? <laughs> oh, the thing, that, the thing that made me sad in my playthrough that it was so wholesome in her playthrough was the little button scene at the end when they oh, show... Like when they have the well, I didn't get to watch you play. Oh, I'm okay. saying when I was watching her play, when they got the button scene with Connor at the end when he and Hank show up yes. and they did give the big old bro hug. He's back. He's back. He's back. Because the thing is, like, like, I realized after watching that Miranda get that scene because, you know, the first time I didn't get it, I realized now Hank's there because he was waiting for Connor. Yeah? Because yeah. Pro- Connor probably told him, I will be back, wait for me here or something. I'll be back. Yeah, you know, he probably told him, wait for me here, or maybe Connor sent him a text later on saying, I'm going to come to this location, come to this location. You know, it's just something. Or they just had probably an agreement of where they were going to meet afterwards because of the whole revolution thing. Connor, no. Connor, yes. <laughs> Basically, it's like, Connor, Connor, don't do this. Connor, please do this. Oh, I think that's Romano, I think. Is that? It could be. It could very well be. I think that is her. Well, there you go. Yeah, so I tend to like characters, right? And also, what I really liked about Connor when he became became my favorite is the whole 
he's struggling to do what's right, but he also wants to do what's good for the mission. And I relate yeah. to that because there's sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. I'm doing certain things like I want to do what's right, but I also you know at the same time I have to I tell I want I don't want to always be like so focused on a mission. I want to be able to make my own choices and yeah. uh, you know. I want to do what I feel is right. right, not always what I think should be right. You know, I want to do what I want to. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay? I get you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I want to follow my own morals, not because society says I should do this type of thing. So moral of the story, oh, yes. Yeah. So moral of the story, yes, Daddy Connor. God damn it. <laughs> That's so. So now let's let's spend thirty minutes talking about why we don't like Daddy Kings. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thirty minutes, really? It's gonna be a whole like podcast and a half, basically. <laughs> I've admitted to you before um, sorry, how I feel about Daddy Kings. Yeah, it's basically the long story short is no, don't. Yeah. Robot says, don't. Greg, from this moment on, I will only call you some no. Kind of Daddy. No! Oh, no. Ew. Ew. Please. No. Oof. You know, if we ever gain any sort of popularity, I don't want anyone to ever call me that. I'll I feel start, like this I'll, is opening the floodgates to have that happen. So at a panel, I'll call you Daddy, and I'll start the trend. Oh. So we should cook dinner soon because I'm hungry. You're going to call me Daddy Kamsky and that's all I'm going to be called for the rest of my life? <laughs> Until you cosplay him, you know, yes. I'm not cosplaying Kamsky! You no, know, I think it'd be funny as a joke one time, like if we get popular at a panel, you'll just say fuck it and you'll just do it for that one panel. For the, and then you'll be like, this is the only time you're ever going to see me do this, guys. Yeah. I'm never doing it again, spirit. so you better get your pictures now. I will spearhead the Teddy Kamsky movement. And then... T- and then Kari just like <laughs> uh, so on the note of daddy let's go ahead and end this podcast cause daddy kings also need to end Greg's already cosplaying him. god <laughs> damn it you know Greg if you do it I'll this is I'll, your legacy if you do it Greg I'll dress as Chloe okay Ooh. just saying I'll tell and I'll tell Connor to shoot you in the head oh okay <laughs> Does this mean I have to be Connor when she's Yeah, because you're in the hood! Oh, no. <laughs> Car- yikes! Kari's like, yikes! <laughs> anyway. Anyway, speaking of things that need to end, let's end this podcast. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us on this podcast. May, give us some words of wisdom before you go. Uh, don't look a horse gifted in mouth or something like that. A gift horse. I'm helping oh, you. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, here's one. Here's a tip. Don't go down dark alleys. That's a great tip. With a uh, robot just said bye, Daddy. That's Have a good one, one guys. No. It, speaking of things we need to end, let's actually end this podcast. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I would say this is probably my favorite podcast we've done so far. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much. We can't wait to do more podcasts in the future. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let us know what you think of any of the topics that we talked about in today's episode of the HR Office. And hit that notification bell if you subscribe so you get more updates. These go uh, live on Twitch every other Sunday between 6 and 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and they go up the following Monday on youtube.com slash hardest reset. Thank you guys so much for going in on the long haul for this one. We were over two hours on this, but this was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, hope you guys take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and we will see you guys Friday for a brand new hardest reset video. Until then, see you guys later.